What's up, world? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, today is Friday. You already know what the deal is. Today is Friday. We are doing NCLEX questions. Let me turn the slide up. Okay, or not. Boop, there we go. Hey, so welcome, welcome, welcome. We are doing NCLEX questions. Welcome to everybody that is joining now. My name is Kevin. <clears throat> I go by the boot nurse. Make sure you guys check me out on all those platforms. We're going to be doing NCLEX questions today. So make sure you guys like, share, follow. Um, and yeah, so like once we get a good amount of people that are in here, uh, I definitely uh, will turn this camera around and nobody will have to keep looking at me. All right. But hey, if you guys are new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you are at in your nursing journey. Uh, I don't care if you're doing pre-nursing. I don't care if you're in nursing school. If you're trying to get into nursing school. Uh, did you graduate? You about to graduate? You take the NCLEX? Did you pass? Did you fail? You've been a nurse for, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. I want to know it. They want to know it. You want to know it. So look, we make it down. RN2 for life. That's what I'm talking about. Congratulations to you, ma'am. Welcome to the greatest shit show on earth of being a nurse. Hey, so this is what I'll say to you. If at any point in time that these lives have helped you, just send me a DM saying like, hey, you know, your lives help, blah, 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 blah. It really does help me out a lot because it shows that what I'm doing really helps people. And it also shows that not only is it beneficial, but people are seeing results. And the best, the best thing that I, the reason why I like to do this is because I wish I had something like this for when I was in school or I even wish that, you know, people did it or I even knew about it. And plus, you see the benefits of it. Even if the questions may seem easy to some people, just being in a community of people that are going through the same struggles that you're going through, as well as the same struggles of what we went through as people that are already nurses, is like it says a lot. So if you could do that for me, that would be great. But shout out to all like what well, I got like 10 people up in here now. Hey, I appreciate everybody. If you guys are new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. And even if you're not a nurse, like I have some occupational therapists in here, some PTsers, I got some respiratory therapists, respiratory techs all up in here, had some CNAs, some so, some uh, PCTs, had some med students, had a bunch of folks in here, PA students, some nutritionists. I think uh, uh, there was an engineer up in here. I mean, I don't know what engineer wants to be a nurse, but cool. You do you. You do you, boo. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I did it yesterday and I really don't know if I passed. I was all over the place. I'm from Jamaica. That's OK, Ava. That's OK. Because uh, most people that go into that exam, you know, they're just like most people go into the exam, they feel nervous. Most people come out feeling defeated, but you're a lot smarter than you know. That test is meant to be difficult. It's meant to challenge you uh, and it's meant for you to understand what it's like to be a safe nurse. Like that's the base. That is the basics of the basics. Right. Uh, repeat test taker. Chocolate says she's a repeat test taker. Hey, so am I. I took my NCLEX three times, y'all. Three. OK, as soon as we get 100 folks up in here, we're going to hey, we'll turn around and we'll do these questions. So, like I said, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at, your nursing journey. McKenna says I'm an RN student. I'm a farm student. I love learning from nursing videos. Shout out to you, Steph. I appreciate you being here. Ancy says I'm a repeat tester. OK. All right, y'all. We got 113 people up in here. I ain't going to sit here and run my mouth anymore. I know what you guys are here for. So let's go ahead and we'll turn this camera around. Boom. There it is. Hey, real quick before we begin couple of house rules and, you know, like kind of like a little commercial break. If you think about it, hey, we're doing NCLEX questions. Make sure you guys participate. Participation is the key. I'm kind of funny sometimes. It just depends on how I feel. I might talk about Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears because to me that shit is hilarious. Um, <laughs> Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Give me all them likes. Don't be selfish your whole life. Don't troll my chat. You troll my chat. I'm a ban that ass. It literally says it right there. I'm a ban that ass. All right, cool. Don't be rude. Uh, NurseLabs.com is where I got... Um, is where I got these questions from. So you guys can go ahead and check that out um, for yourself. Seven day NCLEX course. That's my course. You guys can check out that link in my bio. It's going for $48. Hey, it's only going for $48 until um, essentially until after Black Friday. So or after Cyber Monday. So, hey, get it while it's there for 48 bucks. I don't know where else you can beat that. All right, here we go. Question number one. A nurse is evaluating a post-operative patient and notes a moderate amount of serous drainage on the dressing 24 hours after the surgery, which of the following is the appropriate action, nursing action, I'm sorry, notify the surgeon about evidence of infection immediately, leaving the dressing intact to avoid disturbing the wound site, remove the dressing and leave the dressing open to air or change the dressing and document the uh, clear appearance of the wound. What's up, Sandy? How are you? ER ICU nurse for 20 years. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Hey, a little bit about me. Been a nurse for three and a half years. I've worked in the ICU. I've worked in PACU and I work in the operating room currently. That is my current place of my current area of nursing, I guess, if that's what you guys want to go by. So, all right. 
I'm going to do a stopwatch or a stop clock as well for everybody. That way we're not sitting on these questions forever. So I'll give you guys another 15 seconds. If you guys are new here, welcome. Make sure you guys smash the like button. Make sure you guys like, share, follow. Don't be selfish your whole life. All right. And I also want to know who you are, where you're from and where you're at in your nursing journey while you guys are dropping them answers down there. So there's a big, there's a big difference between Cirrus and, and, uh, and uh, was it uh, the Cirrus Sanguinis, right? So think about those. Soup deep high. How are you? Rad tech is better career. Well, that's debatable. That's debatable. Rad tech may be a better career for you, but it may not be the better career for those who are, you know, loving the job that they do as a nurse. So, you know, that's subjective. But I do like I do like radiology. They're pretty cool. So here we go. Here's our answer. Here is our answer. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is D. Change the dressing and document the clear appearance of the wound site. A moderate amount of serous drainage from a recent Surgical site is a sign of normal healing. Serous drainage is clear, thin, and watery. The production of serous drainage is a typical response from the body during the normal inflammatory healing stage. Yes, shout out to y'all, shout out to y'all. Here we go. Hey, and remember, when you guys are reading, always read your rationales, why you got it correct, and why these are incorrect. That is the best way for you guys to retain information. I'm putting y'all on game right now. I don't care what they tell you in school. I'm telling you right now, that's the way that you want to study and retain information. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here's our here on to the next one. All right. Question number two, the patient returns to the emergency department less than 24 hours after having a fiberglass cast applied for a fractured radial uh, right radius. Which of the following patient complaints would cause the nurse to be concerned about impaired perfusion uh, to the limb, uh, severe itching under the cast, severe pain to the right shoulder, severe pain in the right lower arm or increased warmth in the fingers. Hey, if you guys are new here, welcome. We're doing NCLEX questions. We're going over NCLEX questions. If you guys don't know what the NCLEX is, that is the licensing exam for practical nurses and registered nurses. Uh, Make sure you guys like, share, follow. Smash that like button, share and follow. Don't be greedy your whole life, you know what I'm saying? My name is Kevin, your gracious host, dropping these questions. We do these Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 5.30. I didn't do them this past Wednesday because, you know, got an adult around here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to get out 10 seconds. Ryan, thank you for the follow. Everybody's screaming compartment syndrome at me. Okay. We got C. Okay. So which one represents compartment syndrome? If the, you guys, if that's the one that you guys are going for. Betty, thank you for the rose. Appreciate you. I feel like when people give me roses, it's like I'm at a nightclub and I go out where all the smokers are at outside. And that lady on the outside is, is trying to sell me a rose for $5. But I appreciate you. <laughs> All right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here is our answer. Sandy, I appreciate you for the roses, girl. You know, I love you. Appreciate you. Here we go. In three, two. And the answer is C, severe pain in the right lower arm. Impaired perfusion to the right lower arm uh, as a result of a closed cast may cause neurovascular compromise and severe pain requiring immediate cast removal. Uh, when there is an increase of compartmental pressure, there is a reduction uh, in the venous outflow. This causes venous pressure and thus venous capillary pressure to increase. If the intra compartmental pressure becomes higher than radial pressure, it uh, a decrease in arterial inflow will also occur. So, yes, you are correct. It was compartment syndrome. All right. So, hey, remember, as you guys are going through these, as you guys are going through these questions, make sure you guys read your rationales. All right. You just that's the rationale for why they're correct. And remember, you could go through 100 questions and your questions will they they're just not going to make sense or they're going to be incorrect or they're going to be written incorrectly. However, just because you have 100 questions and there's four or five of them that are incorrect doesn't mean that you should fail your quiz doesn't mean you should fail that exam. All right. I'm just being completely honest with you all. All right, here we go. Question number three. An older patient with osteoarthritis is preparing for discharge. Which of the following instructions is correct? Increased physical activity and daily exercise will help decrease discomfort associated with the condition. Uh, Joint pain will diminish after a full night's rest. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication should be taken on an empty stomach. Or acetaminophen is a more effective anti-inflammatory than Motrin or ibuprofen. What do we think? And I'll give you guys 20 seconds. I just want to let y'all know this 20 seconds goes by extremely fast. Hey, if you guys are new here, welcome. We're doing NCLEX questions. I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. And even if you're not a nurse, I want to know, you know, 
what what what's your career choice? I had somebody jump up in here and say that radiology is better. Cool, whatever you do, you boo. But uh, I like to try to gauge to see where everybody is, uh, where they are. Not a nurse, auto injury. Oh, okay. Like insurance, Katie, like insurance, auto injury, ER nurse, three years, hospice. Shout out to you, Betty. Uh, hoping to apply to a nursing program in two semesters. Don't hope, make it happen. Trying to be an ER nurse. Don't try, make it happen. Fourth, fifth semester. That's what I'm talking about. Waiting on my ATI, wait, your ATI or your ATT. Currently in help promo. Okay. All right. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all. All right. Here we go, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two, and the answer is A, increased physical activity and daily exercise will help de decrease discomfort associated with the condition. Physical activity and daily exercise can help improve movement and decrease pain in osteoarthritis. Exercise programs that combine both uh, aerobic and resistance training uh, have been seen to decrease pain and improve physical function in multiple trials and should be encouraged by physicians regularly. All right. So shout out to everybody that got that answer right. Shout out to all 200 plus of y'all that are in here rocking with me. Make sure you guys read your uh, rationales, why they're right or why they're not correct, why they're not correct. And then also know where it falls under the eight sections of the client needs. I would love to take nursing classes. Why not? Make it happen. A uh, long time. No talk, Kevin. I finished my first week of school. Shout out to you, Amber. That's right. Amber, it's been a while. What's up, Steph? How are you? All right, y'all. Here we go. Question number four. Uh, which patient uh, should not be prescribed? Uh, was it a uh, well, Fosamax for osteoporosis? Is it a a female being uh, or I'm sorry, a female patient being treated for high blood pressure uh, with an ACE inhibitor? Uh, is it uh, B, a patient with an allergy to iodine or shellfish, a patient with calorie restricted diet or a patient on bed rest uh, who must be maintained in a supine position? Uh, do you have a free trial for your program? Sandy, I do not have a free trial for my program. I don't have a free trial for my program because it's only 48 bucks. It's only $48. That's why. However, uh, on my website, you'll be able to see what the curriculum is, like what the curriculum layout is. Right now, currently, there's 42 content videos in there, as well as uh, I have a new generation NCLEX review that uh, I'm editing and going to be putting up here shortly within the next week or so. So the site, uh, if you want the site, it's thebootnurse.com slash or thebootnurse.com slash special. If you go to the link in my bio, uh, it'll be the very first one that's there. You click on that. It'll take you right there. Okay. All right, here we go. I'll give you guys another 10 seconds. Shout out to all 400 plus of y'all that are in here. Make sure you guys like, share, and follow. Smash that like button. Share it. Don't be greedy and follow me because, you know, I'm kind of cool sometimes, I guess, or whatever, you know. <coughs> all right, here we go. Appreciate y'all. Here we go. Answer in three, two. And the answer is D, the patient on bed rest who must remain in supine position. Uh, what is it? Alden, uh, aldendrate. Aldendrate. There it is. Uh, can cause significant gastrointestinal side effects such as esophageal irritation. So it should not be taken if a patient must stay in a supine position, right? Because then if it causes epigastric irritation, they could possibly uh, vomit. It can turn into an aspiration issue. Then we have an airway. We have an airway as well as a breathing issue at that point, right? So, um, Shout out to everybody that got the question right. Pharmacology, pharmacological, or pharmacological and panteral therapies is the second largest section on NCLEX at like 18%. Okay. Um, so pharmacology, management of care, and physiological adaptation make up the three largest sections on NCLEX, 44 to 49%. All right. So make sure you guys understand that. All right, here we go. Question number five. Shout out to all y'all. Which of the following strategies is not effective for the prevention of Lyme disease? Right. Is it a uh, insect repellent on the skin and clothes uh, when it is a Lyme endemic area, long sleeve shirts and long pants, uh, prophylactic antibiotic therapy prior to uh, anticipated exposure to ticks or careful examination of the skin hair for ticks following anticipated exposure? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? I'll give you guys 25 seconds. You're trying to understand. Wait, what? Who said that? Amanda said, I'm trying to understand what percentage I need to pass. So the so the exam, the NCLEX is a computer adaptive exam. OK, so it's based off of you, how you answer. So if you get a question right, the exam is going to give you a harder question. If you get it wrong, it's going to give you a slightly easier question. And that's how the trend goes. Now, 
Think of it as being on a scale of zero to 100. You need to score above half and half is 50%. So you need 50% or higher in order for you to pass your exam and get your license. Will you ever know? No, you're not going to know like, oh, I'm at this 50% or whatever. But while you're studying, you'll be able to gauge it a lot better that way. If that makes sense. Let me know if that makes sense. Give me a thumbs up, Amanda. All right, here we go, y'all. Here's our answer. Uh, is, it, is it Nini? Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. All right, y'all, here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is C, prophylactic antibiotics. Uh, prophylactic uh, use of antibiotics is not indicated to prevent Lyme disease. Antibiotics are used. Um, antibiotics are used only with symptom, with symptom when symptoms develop following a tick bite. A specific treatment is dependent upon the age of the patient and stage of the disease. For patients older than eight years of age, localized disease uh, doxycycline is recommended for 10 days. Patients under the age of eight uh, receive amoxicillin uh, or cephala or cere- Oh my God. So, Ceph- oh my, I'm not even gonna say it. I can't, I can't even say it. I'm not even gonna say it. I'm having a day, uh, but you take it for 14 days. <laughs> Uh, to avoid the potential for tooth, uh, tooth staining um, because of tetracycline use in young ages. All right. I'm just letting you know. I ain't going to sign. I'm not signing it out. Definitely not going to sign it out because um, I'm not a 10 year old getting ready for a spelling bee. I'm on a live and I'm, I don't want to completely embarrass myself <laughs> more than I already did. What program do you recommend studying for NCLEX? Mine. But as of right now, uh, there's so many other programs that are out there, especially it just depends on you and what you're trying to learn. Hey, quick commercial break. Hey, we're doing NCLEX questions. So shout out to everybody that's here. Make sure you guys like, share and follow. Uh, I'm kind of funny. So make sure you guys follow me. Don't be selfish. Okay. Share this, share this with people. You never know who's going to need it. Don't troll my chat. If you troll my chat, I'm going to ban you. It literally says I'm a ban that ass. So don't be that person. Okay. Um, I got these questions off nurselabs.com. Make sure you guys go over there and say it. Oh, wow. I read it wrong. I thought something was B. Hey, RTFQ. All right. And also, seven-day NCLEX course is in this pre-launch phase. It's for $48. Check that link out in my bio. It'll take you straight there, okay? All right, here we go. Question number six. Um, A nurse is performing a routine assessment of an IV site in a patient receiving both IV fluids and medication through the line. Which of the following would indicate the need for discontinuation of the line as the next nursing action. So the key word for there is next. So in a systematic approach, if I'm going one, two, and three, if we're already at two, what is the third step that I would do based off of the need to discontinue, okay? A patient complains of pain for movement. An area proximal to the insertion site is, uh, what is it, red and warm and painful. The IV solution is infusing too slowly, uh, particularly when the limb is elevated or a hematoma is visible in the area of the IV site. What are we thinking? I'm going to give you all another 20 seconds. I see y'all screaming out the answer. Shout out to all 306 of y'all that are in here. Make sure you guys like, share, follow. Kill that like button, y'all, and make sure you guys share. You never know who's going to need it. And of course, follow me because, you know, I'm cool sometimes. But I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Even if you're not a nurse, like what, what is your career field and what brings you to, you know, hanging out over here, listening to a nurse and hanging out with other nurses? Appreciate the follows. Appreciate the follows. RN dialysis. Shout out to you. I know. I know a few of them. ADN senior graduating. Okay. All right. All right. Eight years. Want to quit? Want to quit here for the money? Wait. What? You're gonna. You're gonna you want to quit and do money? What? I'm confused. Taking an NCLEX very soon. All right. Is it Angelina? All right. I see you. Depart, uh, director of nursing for 25 years. Look, uh, how do I like it? How do I like what? Ash says, how do I like what? All right, y'all, here's our answer. Here is our answer. Medical analyst. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. In three, two, NCLEX in three weeks. Hey, it's coming. It'll be here right before you know it. And the answer is B, an IV site that is red, warm, painful, and swollen indica- uh, indicates that phlebitis has developed and the line should be discontinued and restarted in another area. Phlebitis is inflammation of the vein. Uh, it is usually associated with acidic or alkaline solutions or solutions that are high in osmo- osmolarity. Uh, phlebitis can also occur as a result of vein trauma during insertion, use of an inappropriate IV catheter size for the vein, or prolonged use of the same IV site. 
So shout out to everybody who got that right. Hey, you never know where you are at in your position and your nursing of your nursing journey. So for pre-nursing students and students who just started in their first semester, they may not know this. OK, so just be aware of where you are in that position. OK, finishing up mental health and med surge one. Shout out to you. All right. Here we go. And that was pharmacology, pharmacological and parenteral therapies. OK. And I know somebody down here asked me what is like, uh, how do they get through med surge? I'll answer that question here in a second. But here we go. Question number seven. A hospitalized patient has received two transfusion or I'm sorry, has received transfusions of two units of blood over the past few hours. The nurse enters the room to find the patient sitting up in bed, uh, dyspneic and uncomfortable on assessment. Crackles are heard in the lung and base of the lungs, probably indicating that the patient is experiencing a complication of transfusion. Which of the following complications is most keyword is most likely the cause of the client's symptoms? Is it febrile uh, non hemolytic reaction, allergic transfusion reaction, an acute hemolytic reaction, or fluid overload? In school, waiting to take my exit HESI. May y'all screaming at me right now? Okay. All right, so to answer that question, if you're in med surge right now and you're trying to, and you're in school for med surge, uh, one of the biggest tips I'll tell you, and I don't care what people tell you or think about it, but get into a study group. Get into a study group, you and three other people, you and each one of you guys do 25% of the work. 25% of the work will gross you 100% of the gains. Okay? So find you a group of people that you can actually work with. Like, don't go on there and start talking about Britney Spears' book and how Justin Timberlake. A, a allegedly cheated on her. All right. I don't know. Don't go over there. Start talking about stupid shit. All right. Go in there to, for a purpose and do that work. Eddie's graduating in 24. Shout out to you, Eddie. Or oh, you're in BSN in 24. Okay. I got you. All right. Here we go. All right. D A D. What's all oh, there? Go cast cat. Uh, cast says D. So there's the answer. Y'all there's the answer since cast is here. All right. Y'all here we go. Here's our answer. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is D fluid overload. Fluid overload occurs when the fluid volume uh, infused over a short period is too great for the vascular system, causing fluid to leak into the lungs. Signs include dyspnea, rap, uh, rapid respirations, and discomfort as the patient described. Transfusion-associated circulatory overload includes any four of the following occurring within six hours of the blood transfusion. You have acute respiratory distress, tachycardia, increased blood pressure, acute or worsening pulmonary edema and evidence of a positive fluid balance. This is called TACO. Yes, it is. Indeed, it is called TACO. Mm -hmm. The transfusion associated circulatory overload. That is what it is. Med surge makes me what? What makes you want to cry? Look, you think med surge makes you want to cry? Makes you want to cry? Wait until you start your first year of nursing or your first six months to a year of nursing. You work in the lab. Shout out to all my lab techs. Hey, I just want to let you know that 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 my specimen that I sent down was not hemolyzed. You're just lazy. Yeah, I said it. I said it. Shout out to all my nurses who agree. Give me thumbs up in the chat if you agree that lab be just lying and don't want to do nothing. I'm just saying. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. All right, y'all. Here we go. Question. <laughs> oh, here we go. Question number eight. A patient in uh, labor and delivery has received an uh, amio amiotomy. Uh, the hemolyzer 5000 did it. <laughs> OK, which of the following is correct? Select all that apply. Frequent check for cervical dilation uh, will be needed after the procedure. Contractions may rapidly uh, become stronger and closer together after the procedure. The fetal heart rate will be followed closely after the procedure due to the possibility of core compression. The procedure is usually painless and is followed by a gush of amniotic fluid. Uh, the procedure is without pain. So select all that apply. So I need to see the answers. Who said this? Uh, I'm a hospice nurse, 14, 14 years old and maybe a future nursing. Student. Oh, oh, hospice aid. OK, I got you. I got you. Hey, if you guys are new here, we're doing NCLEX questions. We're doing nursing questions. All right. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Also, after this, I'll do like an AMA. I usually do like an ask me anything specifically around nursing. Um, you know, you guys can ask me all your questions. Ask me all them questions down in the uh in the comment section, you guys can see my glorious face that everybody loves to see. So, all right, we got ABCs, we got uh, BDA. Uh, how can I take the NCLEX? What? How can I take the NCLEX for fun? First of all, you better not be trolling me. You better not be trolling me just because you want to take the NCLEX for fun. No one wants to sit there and take that fucking test for fun. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Trust and believe me. And you damn sure don't want to spend all that money to go take it too, because it's anywhere between three to five hundred dollars a pop, just depending on what state that you're in. All right, y'all, here we go. Here is our answer. 
Here is our answer. And also take a hey, take the liberty. Take the liberty. If you don't know something, it's okay for you to look it up. All right. It's just like when you start working on the floor and if you don't know what the medication is, look that shit up. Don't ever feel ashamed to look up anything because I would rather you look it up and know the answer than you just try to be prideful and try to guess and then you fuck up and then something really bad happened. Okay. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is B, C, D, and E. All right. Uh, it says, okay, thank you. I know it had to do something with cutting into something <laughs> based off of the otomy part. Hey, mercy, as long as, hey, you know your, your medical terminology, so you know it had to do something with that aspect, right? So here we go. Uh, uterine contractions typically become stronger and occur more closely together following an amyotomy. The fetal heart rate is assessed immediately after the procedure and followed uh, closely to detect changes that may indicate core compression. The procedure itself is painless and results in the uh, quick uh, expulsion of amniotic fluid. OK. Oh, my God, I got it right. Don't, hey, don't be so surprised that you got it right. All right. Physiological adaptation, y'all. Physiological adaptation. Here we go. Question number nine. The nurse is counseling the mother of a newborn infant with uh, hyperbilirubinemia. Man, hyperbilirubinemia. All right. Which of the following instructions by the nurse is not correct. Right. So what did the nurse say that was wrong? Right. So three of these answers will be correct. One of them will be incorrect. And that incorrect answer is the correct answer. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense because I know the knots will mess people up. All right. Anyway, here we go. Uh, continue to breastfeed frequently, at least every two to four hours. Follow up with the uh, infant's physician within 72 hours of discharge for a recheck of the serum bilirubin and exam. Watch for signs of dehydration, including a decreased urine output and change in skin turgor. Or keep the baby quiet and swaddled and place the bassinet in a dimly lit area. What are we thinking? Uh, who is that? Shift worker. Thank you for the follow. Selena, appreciate the follow. Thank you. Apparently, I cannot read today. So look, no, Norm, I'm going to need for you to get it together. Hey, I have a nice little saying that I like to say, RTFQ. RTFQ. Y'all tell me down there in the chat what it means. Give that baby some light. Give him that light, girl. You know what I'm saying? What RTFQ mean? Uh, D, if the billy room is not. Okay. Got D. We got A. Is it, is it Luan, Luanda? Lu yeah, Luanda. Thank you for the rose, Luanda. Appreciate you. Nemia means blood. Hey, so RTFQ, y'all, RTFQ. Remember, read the explicit word question. Yeah, you go. Shout out to you, user30. Appreciate you. Only one that want to answer. Apparently, everybody else is shy. Um, nurse RMB is in with lots of experience. Another state, not able to pass the test. I don't know. I don't know what that means. What you mean? Uh, it happened to my baby. It happened to my son as well. He had uh, he had hyperbilirubinemia as well. So, all right, y'all, here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is... D, keep the baby quiet and swaddled in place that bassinet in a dimly lit area. An infant discharged home with hyperbilirubinemia should be placed in a sunny rather than um, dimly lit area with expo with skin exposed uh, to help process the bilirubin, right? Because we want to, hey, that vitamin D is what helps, right? That sunlight is what helps, right? Uh, photo, uh, phototherapy is uh, started based on the risk factors and the serum bilirubin levels. OK, bilirubin absorbs light uh, optimally in the blue green range of 460 to 490. OK, and is either photo iso was it uh, isomerized and excreted into the bile or converted into is it the lumerubin and excreted into the urine? Look, hey, these are a lot of big words for me. I'm just saying we're trying out here. All right. So essentially, get when anybody that a baby that has bilirubin that is high, hey, it's mom's bilirubin that they're trying to essentially get off. So you got you got to give these babies light. You got to give these babies some light. Give them the sun, all of it, not some of it, not a few of it, but all of it. It says my baby looked like a glow worm. <laughs> hey, my son looked yellow, like he looked like. Yellow. He definitely did. And he light skin and he already think he privileged walking around here trying to raise as an 18 month old. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, get out of here. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do with him. I'm just saying. But uh, <laughs> anyways, here we go. Question number 10. The nurse is giving discharge instructions to the parents of a healthy newborn. See, so, yeah. <laughs> which of the following instructions should the nurse provide regarding car safety and the trip home from the hospital? This is very important, y'all. Very important. Uh, the infant should be restrained in a car, uh, in an infant car seat, uh, properly secured in the back seat in a rear facing position. The infant should be restrained in a infant car seat, properly secured in the front passenger seat. 
uh, an infant car seat facing forward or re-arced um, in the back seat. Or for the trip home from the hospital, the parent may sit in the back seat and hold the newborn. Lord have mercy. Yeah, I know some of y'all. I know some of y'all be doing that. You'll be like, I'll hold him. Mm -mm. You better put that baby in the car seat and stop playing games. How y'all doing? Welcome. If you guys are new here, we are doing NCLEX questions. I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Make sure you smash that like button, you share, and you follow. I've had some people ask me about doing tutoring or one-on-one -on -one coaching. That is temporary. That is temporarily when I'm not doing it temporarily right now because already, I'm already coaching 10 people. So once uh, one person is out, then I'll have another opening. I love your stream. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Mr. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. 101, appreciate you. Uh, Oklahoma and LPN. Okay, shout out to you. All right. Pap says A. All right, y'all. Hmm. We'll, we'll answer this question. We'll answer. Uh, is it Chantel? Appreciate the follow. Here we go. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two, a Florida nurse. Lord of mercy. I'm just playing. I'm just joking. Here we go. The answer is A, the infant should be restrained in the car uh, in an infant car seat properly secured in the back seat in a rear facing position. All infants under one year of age weighing less than 20 pounds should be placed in a rear facing infant car seat secured properly in the back seat. Rear facing car seat, oh, I'm sorry, rear facing car safety seats for infants are perhaps the least controversial. Uh, uh, rear facing car seats have superior effectiveness in preventing serious injury in infants from car crashes. Uh, children less than 24 months riding in rear facing car seats uh, were 1.76 times less likely to have severe injuries from all types of car crashes related to children riding in uh, forward facing car seats. OK, so be aware of that. It says Florida nurses will never beat the fraudulent. I'm trying to tell you they won't. They won't. Hey, real quick, we're doing NCLEX questions. This is our little commercial break. Commercial break. Make sure y'all participate. Make sure you guys follow, 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 follow. Share, share, share. Like, like, like. Don't be selfish. Don't be greedy, okay? Don't troll my chat. You troll my chat, I promise you. I promise you if you troll my chat, I'm going to ban you, okay? I will ban that ass, all right? And I got these questions off nurselabs.com. So if you need questions, free ones, whatever, go over there and check them out, all right? And in the seven-day NCLEX course, we are in our pre-launch phase. It's going for $48.00. For right now, it's going for $48. It's going to change after Cyber Monday. I'm just letting you know that right now. So get it while it's, get it while it's there. Even if you feel like you don't need it and you're not going to need it for another year, I promise you it'll be there for you. All right. Uh, is it a waste of time to use Saunders or Kaplan content to prepare your NCLEX? No, it's not. It's it's content. You know, it's content. It's there. It's how. So here's the thing. There's all these tools out there, but you need to utilize the tools best how you absorb knowledge and how you retain information. It says, uh, I'm sorry, please say it again. I don't even know what you asked me. Virginia B, shout out to you. All right, here we go. Question number 11. The nurse is administering IV furosemide to a uh, patient admitted with congestive heart failure. After the infusion, which of the following symptoms is not expected, right? Is it increased urine output, decreased edema, decreased pain, or decreased blood pressure? Remember, I always tell people to paint the picture, right? What does furosemide do? What is its purpose, right? What is the expected outcome of furosemide? Okay, cool. After all those things you just laid out, which one of these does not belong here? All right. Somebody said they need my coaching. <laughs> hey, if you need my coaching, it'll come back, but I'm full right now. I'm only one person. I can only do it. I can only do 10 people at a time. All right. I'm going to give you all 15 seconds. Get that fluid off. <laughs> Cass, I cannot. I cannot with you, ma'am. If you guys are new here, we're doing NCLEX questions. I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. LASIK. You mean LASIK? So LASIK, the way that you spell that, that's the eye surgery. <laughs> All right, y'all, here we go. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is C, decreased pain. Furosemide, the loop diuretic, does not alter pain. Uh, the FDA has approved the use of furosemide in the treatment of conditions with fluid overload and edema secondary to congestive heart failure, exacerbation, liver failure, or renal failure, including including nephrotic syndrome, right? New York. Shout out to New York. What part of New York are you from? Before I start, you know, blasting out like real, just I start being real ignorant. 
<laughs> but uh, hey, pharmacology, pharmacological and parenteral therapies. That is the section that words came from. Remember, when you are studying, read your rationales, understand why that answer is correct. And if you picked an incorrect answer, understand why it is incorrect. OK, this is the second largest section on the NCLEX. It doesn't matter if you're taking the LPN exam or if you're taking the RN NCLEX exam. OK. Here we go. Question number 12. Alabama. Shout out to you. Hey, you got some folding chairs. I know you got some in the arsenal. I'm just saying I saw some at Walmart. Uh, they were sold out for a while because, you know, people are ignorant. <laughs> They're ignorant. I'm just saying. Uh, do you have a wait list? My officer package depends on the success of my NCLEX. Who is that? Vicky? Vicky, what officer package you doing? You you doing it for the Navy? You doing it for are you in a, like a military program? You in MESEP? Are you in ASEP? Which one are you doing? Let me know. Uh, here we go. Question 12. Uh, there are a number of risk factors associated with coronary artery disease. Which of the following is a modifiable risk factor? Keyword, my ODS. I'm in the Navy. OK, you're doing. O oh, you're trying to go to ODS. So did you do MESEP? Did you stay 21? Which one are you doing? Uh, that's what that's what I'm asking you. And ODS. Yeah, you're going to go to you're going up to good old Rhode Island. Uh, everybody's screaming a at me. OK. Hey, remember what a uh, word modifiable. How can I something that's that you can change? Louisiana here. Shout out to the Gators. Okay. Hey, LSU. I just want to let y'all know. Hey, people over at, you know, LSU. Something wrong with them. Something wrong with people at LSU. I'm just saying. All right, here we go, y'all. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is, of course, A. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to, this is like, uh, if this shows up on the NCLEX, I'm jumping for joy. <laughs> hey, hey, no, you're not. If, let, okay, I'm not going to read this question. I'll let y'all read the rationale. I'm going to explain something to y'all real quick. Is that an easy question? Yes or no? Health promotions and yep, health promotions and maintenance. That's an easy question. Now, let me ask you this question. If you're on NCLEX and they give you an easy question like that, what do, how do how well do you think you are doing on the exam? If it's easier, it's the worst thing you're doing. You're failing, not doing good. That is correct. Because on NCLEX, they want to see you to do they want you to do analysis and application critical thinking and clinical judgment okay i said that these are free questions some of these questions that they throw on here are really hard but some of them are very easy okay i don't want you guys to get that misunderstood because you'll even when you guys are practicing questions you'll get questions that are like this okay even if you pay for a program out there i promise you all right some are good some are not so good okay but these are free questions and this helps everybody right so just think about that Right. If you start getting questions like this, don't freak out. Just reevaluate that. Hey, maybe you need to slow down. Maybe you need to re, uh, you know, read your questions a lot more thorough, you know, stuff like that. Uh, how do we get a uh, nurse lab QBank? You go to nurselabs.com. That's where they are. All right. Here we go. Question number 13. Uh, uh, tissue. Tra uh, uh, oh, my God. Tissue. Uh, uh, plasminogen activator is considered for the treatment of patients who arrive in the emergency department following the onset of the symptoms of a myocardial infarction. Which of the following is a contraindication for treatment with TPA? Is it worsening chest pain that begins earlier in the evening, history of cerebral hemorrhage, history of a prior MI, or hypertension? Clot busters. <laughs> I cannot. Cass, I cannot with you. Ma'am, you are too much. But hey, if you guys are just now joining, we're doing NCLEX questions. Welcome. Make sure you guys smash that like button. You guys share and you guys follow. All right. And I want to know who you are and where you're from and where you're at in your nursing journey. It's the way I, it's the way. Hey, you're right. It is the way that you remember. However, you best retain information. Hey, I'm, I am all for it. There's so many different mnemonics that are out there that people remember. I remember one for the cranial nerves, but I'm not going to say it because it's inappropriate. Level two here in Texas. Who in Texas? Tay, you're in Texas. What part of Texas are you from, Tay? Tell us right now, because I live in Texas, too. I'm um, from New York. You're in Emory. OK, Hawaii. Shout out to Hawaii. Brownsville. You by the border, girl. I've been down there. I've been down there. I've been hanging out. I've been to Mexico a few times. All right, y'all. You're from Vermont. Oh, I think you're the first. Shout out to Jamaica. OK. All right. Here we go, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is B, a history of a cerebral hemorrhage. A history of a cerebral hemorrhage is a contraindication to TPA because it may increase the risk of bleeding. Uh, bleeding associated with, uh, what is it, the out-of-place or the out-of-place the out out place therapy uh, can be divided into two broad categories. Internal bleeding, including intracranial bleeding or retroperineal bleeding, 
gastrointestinal bleeding, uh, genital urinary bleeding, and respiratory bleeding. Superficial or surface bleeding is observed mainly uh, at invaded or disturbed sites such as the venous cut down, uh, arterial punctures, and recent surgical intervention sites. So like I said, it's a clot buster, right? Clot buster. Four months into my RN schooling. Okay, shout out to you. Nursing school in Northern Iowa or Idaho. I'm sorry. I know it's one of those eyes. One of those. Taylor, thank you for the follow. You can't escape. I, it, you're right. You can't escape it. It's always here. All right. Last sequence in NY. Okay. Oh, at NYU. Okay. Shout out to you. All right. Uh, it says, Vicky, I graduated my BSN in December. Uh, then they go to ODS and I'll be a new grad in the nurse corps. Okay, Vicky. I, hey, so Vicky, I'm asking this because I'm in the Navy. Oh, so let me just tell you all that. I'm in the Navy right now. I'm a, I'm a hospital corpsman in the Navy. I've been in the Navy for 16 years. Uh, I was a hospital corpsman. I'm a surgical tech by trade. I've been an educator since 2015. So I know a little bit about a little bit. So that's Vicky. That's why I was asking you that specifically. So that's, that's why I was asking. Here we go. Question 14. Uh, following a myocardial infarction, a hospitalized patient is encouraged to practice frequent uh, leg exercises and ambulate in the hallway as directed by his physician. Which of the following choices reflects the purpose of exercise for the patient? Is it increase fitness and prevent future heart attacks, prevent bed sores, prevent DVTs, or prevent constipation? You've been an LPN for 21 years. Shout out to you, Brandy. No DVTs on me. Get up. <laughs> hey, you'll always hear that term. Nobody ever got better laying in bed, right? Because we know if you lay in bed, what's not what's not doing what it's supposed to do? Your body, right? Meaning the way that things circulate. So get out of bed. Get that ass out of bed. All right, mm, mm, 10 seconds, y'all. Hey, if you guys are new here, thank you and welcome. We're doing NCLEX questions. I got these questions from nurselabs.com. Uh, Pity Mama, uh, Army Vet, shout out to you, ma'am. Shout out to you. Make sure you guys like, share, smash smash that like button, share, and follow. Get that ass out. Hey, I'm telling you right now, you'll always remember it now. Steph will be like, get that ass out of bed. <laughs> hey, don't say that to your patient, though. They might, they might. You may not get the Daisy Award if you do that. You know what I'm saying? But here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer. Uh, Demi Burr. Okay. And three, two. Uh, he isn't post-op though. You're right. He isn't post. He doesn't. You don't have to be post-op. You don't have to be post-op to develop a DVT, right? You don't have to be post-op at all. So uh, here we go. Yeah. So the answer is C. Prevent a DVT. Uh, exercise is important for all hospitalized patients to prevent DVTs. Uh, muscular contractions promote venous return and prevent uh, homeo uh, hemiostasis in the lower extremities. Encourage physical activity uh, consistent with the patient's energy level. Uh, helps promote a sense of autonomy while uh, being realistic about uh, capabilities. Walking down the hall 20 feet or walking through the house, then slowly progressing, walking outside, saving energy for a return trip. So the biggest thing is just getting them up. The Daisy Award is a toxic culture. All nurses working hard. I agree. Wonder in fact, I remember somebody was just, they wrote a, a really good comment about me. And then I was just like, oh my God, do I get the Daisy Award? But I was being very sarcastic. And then I think my manager was just like, oh my God, do you want it? And I'm like, no, I don't want that shit. Like, <laughs> it's not going to give me no more money. Like what you mean, guy? So, uh, uh, Y'all don't have to respond like me. I'm just saying uh, who is a pity mama. I need your coaching if you have any openings. So I will have some openings. I believe I'll have some openings coming up uh, probably here within the next couple of days. I'll, and I'll let everybody know by Monday for sure. Uh, question 15. A patient arrives in the emergency department with symptoms of a MI uh, progressing to cardiogenic shock. Which of the following symptoms should the nurse expect the patient to exhibit with cardiogenic shock? Is it hypertension, bradycardia, a bounding pulse or confusion? Oh, yeah, Cass, what's up? What's up with that answer? Shout out to all 400 of y'all in here rocking with me. We're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurselabs.com. Make sure y'all smash that like button. You guys share and you guys follow. Don't be greedy, okay? Don't y'all be greedy. All right. I'll give y'all 10 more seconds. Wait list. I don't, so I don't have a, I don't have a wait list right now per se. So like I said, I'm going to put that up. Vicky, we'll talk. Hey, Vicky, as a matter of fact, send me a DM. Because what I'll do, hey, if y'all really, if y'all really want help with uh with the uh, with the NCLEX with the one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh just send me a DM and just tell me that way. And I'll even physically write it down before I get some other stuff to go. All right. Long, uh, how long, Corman? How long have I been a Corman? 16 years. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is confusion. It's D. Cardiogenic shock severely impairs 
The pumping function of the heart muscle causing diminished blood flow to the organs of the body. This results in diminished brain function and confusion. Cardiogenic shock is a primary cardi uh, cardiac disorder characterized by a low cardiac output state of circulatory failure and results um, in end organ hypoperfusion and tissue hypoxia. All right. AI told me it was D. You better stop. You better stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. It, like, damn, I got lucky. Hey, so here's another thing I want you guys to realize. Hey, first of all, it's part of reduction of risk potential. Smaller section on NCLEX, about 9 to 12 percent. Right. But still, all the all, they're all still very important. Make sure you read your rationales, understand why it's correct. And then also read your rationales for your answer choices that were incorrect. So you'll never know if you'll get a question, five or six questions down the line. And this same type of question is written, but it ends up being one of those answers. OK, so Al, shout out to you for getting it right real quick. Commercial break. Commercial. Uh, <laughs> we're doing NCLEX questions. I got them off nurselabs.com. Make sure you guys go over there and check that out. OK, participate. Participation is the key. I'm kind of sort of funny. I talk a lot, but hey, no part of me cares if you care about that. Um, <laughs> Make sure you guys share and follow and you give me all them likes. Don't be selfish your whole life. Don't troll my chat. If you troll my chat, I will ban that ass, okay? Like I said, I got it from nurselabs.com. And of course, I created my own NCLEX course. It's a seven-day NCLEX course. It's for $48 right now until after Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And it's in this pre-launch phase. We have 42 content videos up in there right now. I'm just saying, if you, if you need it six months from now, it'll be there. All right, here we go. Question is it Priyanka? Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Uh, it says, but the true, but that's true. Everything uh, was hyper good eye. What? I don't know. Tay, what you mean? What you mean, Tay? All right, here we go. Question 16. A patient in the cardiac unit is concerned about the risk factor associated with arthrosclerosis. Which of the following are hereditary risk factors for developing arthrosclerosis? Is it a family history of heart disease, overweight, smoking, or age? Sent you a DM one on one tutoring. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Let's see. Everybody screaming A. We screaming A. Screaming A. Keyword. Hey, what's the keyword? And I and I know and look, I know this question is easy since it says hereditary. What's the key? Yeah. So what's the keyword? Oh, they're being tricky with C. <laughs> look at that. Is that uh, uh is it Stiz? Thank you for the uh, the roses. I appreciate you. OK. All right, y'all. A.S.A. <laughs> History. OK. All right. It's also over. Over what? A. -A OK. All right. It's a. Oh, hey, like it's uh, like assay. OK, I got you. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer, of course, is a. What was the key word? Yeah, the key word. Hereditary. There you go. Family history of heart disease is an is an inherited uh, risk factor that is not subject to a lifestyle change. Having a first degree relative with heart disease has been shown to significantly increase risk. There it is. Hereditary. But hereditary, though, hey, for the fact that it said hereditary in the sentence is crazy. <laughs> All right, I'm done. No more of the nonsense. But anyway, hey, health promotions and maintenance, y'all. Health promotions and maintenance. Smaller section on the NCLEX, okay? Here we go. Question number 17, claudization or claudication, sorry, is a well-known uh, effect of peripheral vascular disease. Which of the following factors of claudication is correct? Select all that apply. No way the NCLEX is that easy. Hey, so is it Gab Gabriella Maria? So what I'll tell you is that if you start getting questions that are easy, that's the one thing I'll tell you, that you start getting questions that are easy, what in what direction do you think that you're doing? Or how well do you think you're doing on the exam? Because I'm telling you right now, you will. You, if you're not doing well on the exam, you will get questions like that. Oh, you're only in your second semester. No, I got you. I got you. It's but yes. If you are getting easy questions on the exam that are like the previous question that 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 we just went through, you might want to stop and reevaluate what you're doing. No, my school grades are great. Yeah, your school grades are great because they're going to get you through school and they're going to get you a degree. However, that 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 NCLEX is going to get you a license, which your degree don't mean shit if you can't if you can't use that license. You know what I'm saying? So just 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 just, you know, just some food for thought. You know what I'm saying? If you guys are new here, we're doing NCLEX questions. OK, 
Uh, got them off nurselabs.com. Make sure you guys like, share, and follow. People forget those exams are way different. The exams are, I'm telling you, your NCLEX is different than any exam that you've ever taken unless you've taken the NCLEX before. And I've taken the NCLEX three times, y'all, and I passed on my fourth. Just letting you know, stop telling me that the AI is telling you you need to take some responsibility and some accountability for answering these questions. All right. It says, but what I mean is when uh, when the question is easy, makes me second guess myself. Like, I don't know. Uh, would they? Yeah, they would. ask. And sometimes sometimes questions are that easy, but it depends on how much how much content and information you have. Yeah. NCLEX is no joke. It's a monster. It actually had a 65 at one point, a 65 percent um, uh, failure rate. And last year there was a 79 percent passing rate for ne- for the uh, for the nation. And now it's at 87 percent. So think about that. Here we go. So here's our answer. Our answers are A, C, D, and E. All right. It says, I'm so nervous for it. Don't be nervous for it. If you're scared, go to church. Claudication describes the pain experience by a patient with peripheral vascular disease when oxygen demand in uh, the leg muscles exceed the oxygen supply. All right. Uh, it, says, it says, it says, ho, why is you, ho, why is you here? <laughs> I don't say that to be rude. I say that to be completely honest. Like if you are, don't be scared of it. If you prepare and you recreate the testing center, like I'm telling you right now, practice like you play, right? Go out there, show out at practice. That way, when you go to the game, it feels easy. You know, it's just like another, it's just like another day at the office type deal. Uh, and man says after 45 days, I don't know what you mean. I didn't see what your question was, but physiological ad- adaptation, third largest section on the NCLEX at 14%. Okay. 14%. Here we go. Question 18. The nurse, oh, I'm sorry, a nurse is providing discharge information to a patient with peripheral vascular disease. Which of the following information should be included in the instruction? Walk barefoot whenever possible. Use a heating pad to keep your feet warm. Avoid crossing the legs. Uh, use antibacterial ointment to treat skin lesions as at risk of infection. We got C's. We got C's. And don't and don't worry. I'm working on getting I'm working on getting some better, not some better questions, but I'm working on getting, you know, more calibered type of NCLEX questions. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I got y'all. I'm working on it. Everybody's screaming C at me. All right, cool. I'll give y'all 15 seconds. Hey, if you guys are new here, we're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurselabs.com. Make sure you guys like, share, and follow. Like, share, and follow. Smash that like button. Make sure you guys share because you want other people to know this information. And make sure you follow. And make sure you follow. Never put a heating pad on PVD. Shout out to you, Tay. Look at you. All right, Vicky, I see. I see you sent that DM. Got you. There's no lesions. Okay. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer. And three, two. And the answer is C, never crossing the legs. Patient with peripheral vascular disease should avoid crossing the legs because this can impede blood flow. Sometimes if you think about it, it really is that easy, right? Uh, Place the client's legs in a dependent position in relation to the heart to improve peripheral uh, blood flow. Keep Keep the client... Uh, in a neutral, flat, supine position, if in doubt about the nature of his or her a peripheral vascular problem. All right. That's part of health promotions and maintenance. Somebody was asking, like, why? Why not D? So D says skin lesions uh, at risk for infection should be examined and treated by a physician. This is why it's so important that you read your rationales, ladies and gentlemen, or whatever you identify as. Like, this is why this is why you read your rationales. You like you'll get the content, you'll get the questions. But in order for you to understand and to go forward, you need to read these. All right. I'm telling you from experience. I'm telling you from somebody who failed the exam three times. Okay. yes. No lesions noted. All right. Here we go. Question 19. A patient who was diagnosed with a vaso uh, with a vasospastic disorder, Raynaud's disease, complains of cold and stiffness in the fingers, which the following descriptions is most likely to fit the patient, right? Keyword, most. Adolescent male, an elderly woman, a young woman, or an elderly man. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? And hell, even if these are easy questions, there's nothing wrong with brushing up on it, right? Ashley, what'd you say? Ashley says something. She's screaming at me. What's a wanin? A a wanin? A young wanin? Hey, I have Raynaud's. Uh, I, I don't even know why I said it. I feel like that's how you meant that, but maybe that's not. <laughs> you mean it's what wo- you mean? Wo- you mean woman? Ashley, do you mean woman? Uh, literally was on my test on Tuesday. Look at that. Look at that, Gabriella. Look at that. All right, y'all. Yep. <laughs> meant it like that. Oh, OK, I got you. Woman. OK, Ashley, I see you. 
<laughs> I see you out there. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. I had this on my test today. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. I guess, hey, I guess this, this, you know, this TikTok is helpful. Here we go. Answer in three, two. And the answer is a young woman. A, a woman. A W-O-N-A-N, according according to Ashley. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, Raynaud's disease is a uh, is a common in young women and is frequently associated uh, with uh, what is it the rheumatologic rain, uh, rheumatologic disorders such as lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Second uh, secondary Raynaud's phenomenon is associated with different um, uh, etiologies. Uh, it is most common associated with connective tissue disorders such as a scleral scleroderma uh, lupus. Is that the Sodrens? I always mess that. I always mess that one up. Uh, uh, syndrome and the uh, uh, the anti phospholid uh, syndrome. All right, it's like uh, I have that, and I'm 38. Oh, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. All right, hey, health promotions and maintenance. All right, question number 20. You have it. What, Tammy? What you got? What you got? Hey, hold on, y'all. Real quick, real quick, real quick, because. People be jumping into my chat, be trying to sell me news, bro. Like, don't be trying to sell me news, man. Ah, just send them to my DMs. I'm just playing. Don't nobody do that. Um, Here we go. Question 20. Um, Oh, yeah. Uh, Scorpio, you already know I stay booting, folks. Tammy says I'm 52. I don't know what that means. Age is nothing but a number, baby. That's what I'm talking about. All right, here we go. A 23-year-old patient in the 27th week of pregnancy has been hospitalized on complete bed rest for six days. She experienced sudden shortness of breath accompanied with chest pain. Which of the following conditions is the most likely cause of her symptoms? Is it an MI due to a history of arthrosclerosis, pulmonary edema due to deep vein thrombosis, is it an anxiety attack due to worries about her baby's health, or congestive heart failure due to fluid volume overload? All right, shout out to all 415 of y'all. We are going through... NCLEX questions. I got them off nurselabs.com. Make sure you guys like, share, and follow. All right. And I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Yes, I'm being intrusive. I am nosy. I want to know who you are and I want to know what you know what you're doing. Hey, also, if you're not nursing or anything, I want to know what y'all do too. I've had some engineers in here. I had, you know, some some med students, you know, I had PAs in here you know, my paramedics. So shout out to y'all. I want to know it all. Alexa or Alexia. Sorry. I call you Alexa. My, my shit's about to go off. What is Chosby? Ashley, what is Chosby? What do you mean? Pre-nursing. Okay. Informatics. Okay. I'm an MA. You're a master at arms. Oh, you're a medical assistant. I got you. I got you. Pre-PA. Okay. You're in Australia. Shout out to you from Sydney. Okay. I know some folks that live, live like in Queensland or is it Brisbane? Brisbane's in Queensland, right? I got some people I was deployed with that are in Australia. Some really great friends of mine. Delaware. Okay. All right, y'all. CNA. All right, cool. Med student, med farm tech. Okay, okay. A resident physician. Oh, I know you out there working. I know you out there working. All right, here we go, y'all. Here's our answer. Medical scribe. All right, here we go. And three, two. I'm in law enforcement officer, but going to school my third semester. Shout out to you. Hey, so just so you know, they're actually piloting in some in certain places like uh, nursing officers to like be a nurse that goes and is with a cop, like have a medical provider, like on like right on the scene when stuff happens. So be on the lookout for that. You can actually Google it and go to nurse.org and you can see that article there. But here we go. The answer is B pulmonary uh, embolism due to deep vein thrombosis in a hospitalized patient on prolonged bed care. This is to answer that question that somebody was just like, they're not post-op. You don't have to be post-op and you can develop a DVT. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, so prolonged bed rest, the most likely uh, cause of a sudden onset of, of shortness of breath and chest pain is a pulmonary embolism. And for those who have never seen a pulmonary embolism, I'm telling you right now, it is like you will see it and you will never you will never forget it. I read the who said I read the question wrong. Gabriella, you read the question wrong. Hey, RTFQ, Gabriella. Can you tell me what that means? Cass, let Gabriella know what RTFQ means. Big ups, Jamaica. Shout out to Jamaica. OK. All right. Uh, but yeah, so that's the answer to the question. You don't always have to get you don't always have to get um, uh, be post op to, to develop a DVT. All right. Any hospitalized patient that's on bed rest can develop them. Read the effing question. There you go. There you go. Gabriella. So, you know, that tells you you got to read the effing question. RTF. What's RTFQ? Brianna. Come on now. RTFQ means to read the fucking question. I mean, here we go. Commercial break. Commercial. NCLEX questions. That's what we're doing. 
We're participating. That's what you're doing. Share, follow, give me all them likes. That's what y'all are also doing. Don't be selfish. All right. That don't be selfish your whole life. Hey, if you come into my if you come into my live and you start acting a fool or you troll me, I'm going to first of all, I'm going to troll you and then I'm going to ban you. Who told me I need to chill? You need to chill. Uh, I'm a banny for real. Nurselabs.com is where I got these questions. And also, if you're interested and you need an NCLEX review course, seven day NCLEX course in its pre launch phase going for $48, you can check that link out in my bio. All right, here we go. Question 21. I had the worst clinical today, so the vibe here is much better. Gabby, I'm here for it. Give you a 600. You better stop because you already know I'm going to give you a 600. You already know. Desi, you want a 600 too? I'll give you one too. Here we go. A thrombolytic therapy is frequently used in the treatment of a suspected stroke, which of the following is a significant complication associated with thrombolytic therapy. Is it an air embolism, a cerebral hemorrhage, expansion of the clot, or resolution of the clot? What are we thinking? Uh, what's that? I work for the VA. Thank you for your service. Shout out to you, Aaron. I was going to work at the VA, but then I got depressed when I walked in there and I didn't want to go in there, so I didn't want to do that. <laughs> But shout out to you. Thank you for your support. It's always appreciated. Uh, anyone else in school use Kaplan? Gabriella, I used Kaplan. I used Kaplan for NCLEX, though, but Kaplan wasn't a part of my program, if that if that answers your question. Uh, what does it say? Bra brain bleed what? Um, brain bleeds bad. Okay, I got you, Cass. I got you. All right, y'all. Hey, if you're new here, we're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurselabs.com. Make sure you guys like, share, and follow. All right. And I want to know who you are, where you're from and where you're at in your nursing journey. Is it Isha? Thank you for the follow. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. My clinical days are 12 hours, uh, 12 hour days. How about you guys? Yes, we use Kaplan. Yeah. Clinical hours are 12 hours everywhere. Lisa, Lisa, that's how it was for me, too. And the answer is B, cerebr cerebral hemorrhage. Uh, cerebral hemorrhage is a significant risk. Uh, when treating a stroke victim with thrombolytic therapy intended to dissolve a suspected clot. Success of the treatment demands uh, that it be instituted as soon as possible, often before the cause of stroke uh, has been determined. Bleeding is the most frequent complication of th thrombolytic therapy and can occur in a puncture site or spontaneously anywhere inside the body. Intracranial, uh, intracranial hemorrhage or hemorrhagic shock is the greatest concern. Say so, hey, bleeding, 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 bleeding. Okay. It's all about safety, safety, safety. Get it started and monitor it. And hey, you're going to be drawing serial labs like what? Uh, uh, your H and H, your D dimer, your platelets, all that stuff. Okay. Pharmacological and parenteral therapies. Remember, it is the second largest section on NCLEX. All right. Don't forget that. All right. So shout out to all y'all. Kayla, thank you for the follow. Thrombolytics within three hours. Yep. Right. So and hey, some hospital policies will say, hey, we need to get we need to get them started within the within an hour. All right. So there's all those other things that will come with that, too. Of course, the CT scan diagnostic to really determine what is really going on. Right. But then you also have those physical those physical when you do your physical assessments um, and your you see your objectives, you already see, hey, they got a droopy face. You know, they're lethargic, you know, eyes not moving, so on and so forth. Think about that. Here we go. Question 22. An infant is brought to the clinic by his mother. Who has noticed that he holds his head in an unusual position and often faces one side, which of the following is the most likely explanation? Torticollis uh, with shortening of the, what is it, the sternocleidomastoid muscle? Is it the crany uh, synostosis, uh, which, which is uh, a premature closure of the cranial sutures? Uh, plagiocephaly, uh, which is the flattening of one side of the head, or is it hydrocephaly, which is increase of head size? What are we thinking? Everybody screaming, A. Who said I'm an ICU nurse? I'm an ICU nurse project manager, took the CRNE, oh, which is the licensing exam in Canada, and going to take the NCLEX for learning. Shout out. You're just going to take the NCLEX to learn? Okay, cool. What, hey, whatever you want to do. I, I, I ain't going to hate on you. I just know that. I mean, I think if I was to take the NCLEX now, I, I mean, I already know if I take the NCLEX now, I wouldn't fail it, but nope. I, if I don't have to, I'm not going to do that to myself. Uh, is it hard to try to work? With a temporary license after graduation. No, it is not. It is not hard at all for you to work with a temporary license. Nick, you are in here. Shout out to you, Judy. Judy with the booty. All right, I'm done. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> uh, I take my NCLEX in November. Any advice, please? Uh, study for it. Don't be scared of it. Uh, recreate the testing center. Find, uh, find you a really good review. I got mine, you know. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, determine what type of learner that you are. OK, like are you auditory kinesthetic or are you a visual? Or are you a combination of those? Or do you do read, write? 
right? You put yourself on a schedule. Do you know what the number one thing that you need to study? Start there and then work on some of the easier subjects. Do you need content? Do you need questions? Do you need both? You're always going to need questions. You need to practice questions, but do you need content on top of that? I always tell people that they should get content, right? Somebody saying you world and Archer. I personally didn't like you world. Uh, I like Archer, um, but I didn't like you world when I used it. Even even now, you world's cool. It's all right. It just gives you questions though. I like Archer because they give you questions and answers, and they don't really burn a hole in the pocket either. You know, it all just depends on what you're trying to do. All right. But here we go. And the answer, of course, is a. It is torticollis. Uh, in torticollis, the the sternal mass, the sternocleidomastoid uh, muscle is contracted, limiting range of motion of the neck and causing the chin to point to the opposite side. Yes, that is, that is very true. What about Remar? Remar's all right. Um, the one thing I didn't really, the one thing personally I saw about Remar is that when you're doing questions in certain spots, you have to get the answer right, or it will not let you go. It will not let you go forward to an, uh, like to another, uh, like to the next question. So it kind of forces you, like if you get the answer wrong, it's going to be like, eh, eh, you know, and then you got to put the answer. In your, so at that point, it then becomes a chore. And, I, and to me, it feels like you don't learn from that, but I don't really, I don't really, that's kind of like a nitpick. Some people like that and some people don't. Uh, what special are you? Uh, I'm an OR nurse. All right. Here we go. Physiological adaptation, the third largest section on NCLEX at 14%. Uh, describe content, please. I don't know what you mean. What you mean? What you mean? Describe content. I need I need you to just to give me more context on what you mean. What about ATI? Um, does this affect all ages? Does what affect all ages? Doses calculation advice. Uh, dimensional analysis. With do, with doses calculation, that's all about math. That is all literally about you got to practice it. Um, question twenty three. An adolescent brings a physician's note to school stating that he is not to participate in sports. Uh, due to a diagnosis of Osgood uh, Sclatter disease, which of the following statement about this disease is correct. The condition uh, was caused by the student's competitive swimming schedule. The student will most likely require surgical intervention. The student experiences pain in the inner aspect of the knee or the student is trying to avoid participation in physical education. All right. It says, hi, Kevin. Just wanted to say thank you for all that you do. I passed my intellect history to Chi or is it to, to a hey, shout out to Tochi, y'all. Shout out to her. Everybody give her love right now for passing the NCLEX. Welcome to the shit show. I'm so glad that you passed it. Everybody show her her love right now. Every single person. Everybody needs to be showing her love right now. Show her love, right? Because in reality, if you pass the NCLEX and you come back here and you tell me that, everybody's going to show you love because this is what we have to do for each other. We have to build the community. We have to build the love with one another. There's too much fucking toxicity that happens out in the field of nursing anyway. So if I could start to change that right now, if I can start to change that right now for that way, for you to be a better nurse when you get out there, that's what I'm talking about. So shout out to you. Hey, if you, uh, is it Tucci or, uh, uh, or yeah, Tucci, if you could send me a DM, just telling me like how these lives have helped you, that would really help me out. I appreciate it. All right, here we go. Let's find out what the answer is. Everybody's screaming C at me. Here we go in three, two. And the answer is C. Uh, the student uh, experiences pain in the inner aspect of the knee. The Osgood Sclatter uh, disease occurs in adolescence in rapid growth phase uh, when the infrapatellar ligament of the quadricep muscle pulls into the tibial, uh, um, yeah, the tibial tubercle, causing pain and swelling in the inner aspect of the knee. Uh, the disease is commonly uh, caused by activities that require frequent use of the quads, including track and soccer. All right. So shout out to everybody that got that answer. Shout out to everybody that participating. Hey, physiological adaptation, second or third largest section on NCLEX. Make sure you read your rationales. All right. Every single time. I don't care if you got the question wrong. I'm sorry. I don't care if you got the question right. You need to read it. Uh, so if I so if this came up on our test and never heard of this disease, what the hell happens next? I don't even know what you mean, Bree. What do you mean? Um, question 24. The clinic nurse asks a 13 year old uh, female to bend forward at the waist uh, with arms hanging freely. Which of the following assessments is the nurse more likely conducting spinal flexibility, leg length, uh, disparity, uh, uh, hypostatic blood pressure or uh, sclerosis or scoliosis? Sorry, sclerosis. Oh, my God. All right. Hey, so who else passed? Somebody else just say that they passed. Who else just said they passed? Did somebody else pass? I did say sclerosis. I'm in scoliosis. Don't be doing. Oh, Empress, I just passed my NCLEX two days ago. So happy. I'm telling everybody. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody give Empress love right now. Stop answering the question and give her some love right now. Tell her right now. Tell her that you're proud of her because you should be. You know what I'm saying? Because best believe you come in here and tell me you passed your NCLEX. I'm telling you that I'm proud of you. I promise you. Y'all, I failed my NCLEX three times. Three times, y'all. Three times. Three. 
None of y'all would have known that unless I told y'all. I promise you, right? So shout out to her. Shout out to her for passing because this test is a monster. All right. And this is why I do this. This is why I do the coaching. This is why I created my courses. I never want nobody to feel like they're a failure, like they're left out or like they're not worthy of being part of an occupation that they fought so hard for. You see what I'm saying? So y'all show each other love. That's what we're about. It says, Tay says, uh, y'all better show me love when I pass my next year. Just for that, we ain't showing you. I'm just playing. We'll show you all the love in the world. I promise. But uh, uh, scoliosis, a check for scoliosis, a lateral deviation of the spine is an important part of a routine adolescent exam. So shout out to y'all. Cass says, don't forget about me when I take mine in January. Cass, we ain't going to forget about you. You here all the time annoying me. So of course, I ain't going to be able to forget you, girl. Stop playing with me. Uh, do you coach LPNs or is it all? I coach LPNs and RNs, right? I coach LPNs and RNs. All right, here we go. Question 25. The clinic nurse interviews a, uh, a parent who is suspected of abusing her child. Which of the following characteristics is the nurse least likely to find in an abusive parent? Low self-esteem, unemployment, uh, self-blame for injury of the child, or single status? Oh, my God. Hold on. You already know what I'm about to do. You already know what's coming. Hold on. Y'all go ahead and answer them questions. Hey, if you guys are new here, we are doing NCLEX questions. I want to know who you are, where you're from, and where you are at in your nursing journey. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Don't be greedy your whole life. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of funny. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do around here. Everybody's screaming C at me. Okay. Okay. Man, I think I've had three people come into my chat and tell me that they pass in clicks. I'm so proud of y'all. I really am. Uh, in three months of LPN, already looking at RN school. Shout out to you, Jenna. Okay, girl. I see you out there. Go ahead. All right. Here we go. Here we go. You're in the Philippines. Oh, you're from the Philippines. I've always wanted to go to the Philippines. I think I might go. Passport, bro. I'm just playing. Uh, here we go, y'all. Here we go. <laughs> Here's our answer in three, two. Taking the NCLEX next Thursday. All right, cool. So when I do my live, Chris, when I do my live on Wednesday, I better not see you. All right. All right. Hey, just the mess. We getting there. Okay. My goodness. Y'all such in a rush. And the answer is C. Self-blame for the injury to the child. The profile of a parent at risk of abusive behavior includes a tendency to blame the child or others for the injuries sustained. The child may also uh, be perceived by the parent uh, as an extension of self. The parent's lack of self-esteem and negative self-image may be projected onto the child as well. The child becomes a scapegoat and is made to pay for the parent's sense of inaccuracy and failure. Who said I'm in med school? Uh, I'm in med school and this is super educational for me. I appreciate you endlessly. I don't know what your name is. You got smiley face, exhausted face, monkey face, and kind of crying face, but you are very welcome. You're very welcome. All right, here we go. A psychological integrity, one of the lower, one of the lower sections on NCLEX at nine to twelve percent. Okay, real quick, commercial break. We're doing NCLEX questions, nursing questions for RNs and LPNs. So shout out to everybody else that's not doing that, that is here. Uh, make sure you guys participate. Like, share, follow. Give me all them likes. Give me all them shares. Give me all them follows. Don't troll my chat. You troll my chat. I'm gonna ban that ass. Uh, nurselabs.com is where I got these questions from. You guys can go over there and check that out for yourself. And the seven day NCLEX course, which is in its pre launch phase, going for $48 right now. It is going to go up after Black Friday and Cyber Monday. I'm just letting you know that right now. So just saying, get yourself an NCLEX review for $48 before it goes up to an even higher one. Uh, so yeah, that'll be out there for you, especially those that are going to be taking their NCLEX like here in the next six months to a year. It's going to be, it's going to be great. I'm trying to tell you. All right, here we go. Question 26. The nurse in the emergency department is observing a four-year-old child of signs of increased intracranial pressure after a fall from a bicycle resulting in head trauma. Which of the following signs or symptoms would be cause for concern? Is it a bulging anterior fontanelle? Is it a repeated vomiting? Signs of sleepiness at 10 p.m. or inability, inability to read short words from a distance of 18 inches? What are we thinking? Think about our four-year-old. Anybody in here got kids? Think about a four-year-old. Think about it. Everybody's mm -hmm. screaming B at me. I'm a medic and I'm starting nursing school in the next two weeks. Shout out, is it shout out to you, Luis? Is it, it's either Luis or Lewis. I'm gonna say Luis. Uh, how about B? Could be B. Yes, my son is four today. Shout out to your happy birthday to your son's birthday is today. Who said that? Uh Princess Chris, your son's birthday is today. Shout out to him. Scorpio, baby. You know what I'm saying? Happy birthday to baby boy. My birthday is tomorrow, y'all. I turn I turn a certain age tomorrow. So shout out to everybody. Hey, shout out to all, hey, Scorpio season. Shout out to everybody's birthdays that's here coming soon. All right. I'm about to get yes, Cass. My birthday is tomorrow. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is B, repeated vomiting. 
Uh, increased pressure caused by bleeding and swelling uh, into the skull can drain, or I'm sorry, can damage delicate brain tissue and may become life-threatening. Repeated vomiting can uh, be an easy sign of uh, pressure, of pressure as the vomit center within the medulla is stimulated. <clears throat> Uh, clinical uh, what is it? suspicion uh, for intracranial hypertension should be raised if a pay, if a oh my god if a parent presents with the following signs and symptoms headache vomiting altered mental status uh, varying from drowsiness to coma physiological adaptation third third largest section on the NCLEX happy birthday appreciate that nobody would have known it was my birthday I just figured since she said hey it's my son's birthday today so. I figured like, hey, why not? Hey, but Scorpio season though, gang, gang. You know what I'm saying? D is funny. It really is though. Here we go. Question number 27. A non-immunized child uh, appears at the clinic with a visible rash. Well, they must be from California. I'm just playing. Uh, which of the following observations include the child may have rubella or measles? Is it small blue white spots are visible on the oral mucosa, the rash begins on the trunk and spreads outward. They have a low grade fever or the lesions have a teardrop as a rose petal appearance. So what are we thinking? Shout out to all 320 plus of y'all. We are doing NCLEX questions. I got these questions off of nurselabs.com. So make sure you guys go over there and check that out for yourself. Make sure you guys like, make sure you guys share, make sure you guys follow, smash the like button, share because you're not greedy and follow because you love me because you love me. All right. And I want to know who you are, where you're from and where you're at in your nursing journey. I want to know it while you guys are answering. Tell me all. Give me all the deets. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Gabriella says B. Ash, thank you for the follow. Like Ash Ketchum, like from Pokemon. I want to be the very best. I'm just playing. Man, I really got to get this ADHD checked out. Not even going to lie to you. I'm studying for my NCLEX RN. Shout out to you, Natasha. I'm from Missouri. I graduated my BSN in May. Hey, hey, Morgan. That's what I'm talking about, girl. Is it Sadie? Thank you for the follow. Uh, Sabrina, thank you for the follow. P Patricia, thank you for the follow. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer. And hey, girl. Hey, how we go? Here we go. And the answer is A. A w small blue-white spots are visible on the oral mucosa. Is it the coplic spots are small blue white spots visible on the oral mucosa and are characteristic of measles infections? Uh, most cases show that the characteristic of the, the coplic spots of the disease located in the buccal mucosa uh, at the height uh, of the second molar and appears two to three days before the rash and disappears on the third day. Who said that? I know Cass said something. The couple spot, it always gets, it, yeah, it's always confusing, right? She's like, yeah, I got it correct. My class uh, has us doing adaptive quizzing to prepare us for the NCLEX. They get, they get that give rationales like this. I'm glad. Jenna, I'm so glad that your school does that. I really am. Uh, this is why I'm going into law enforcement. Stop it, Laura. Stop it. <laughs> hey, don't, don't do that to yourself. Hey, if nursing and medicine is where you want to go, go do it. Go make it happen. Hey, physiological adaptation, third largest section at 14%. Is it... Is it Herlene, the rich auntie? You that rich auntie? Hey, I'm just saying. Failed my NCLEX twice. About to take it again. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, we are unsuccessfully successful around here. We are unsuccessfully successful right here. Right? You, you, you are unsuccessful at things. You fail at things. You turn around. You audit. You audit yourself and you see why. You see why you didn't do well. And then you go back to the drawing board and you do it again. All right? Do it again until you pass it. All right? Here we go. Question 28. A child is seen in the emergency department with scarlet fever. Which of the following descriptions of scarlet fever is not correct? Uh, scarlet fever is caused by the infection of group A streptococcus bacteria, strawberry tongue, petechiae occur at the soft palate, or the pharynx is red and swollen. What are we thinking? Shout out to all 400 of y'all. We're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurselabs.com. So if you guys want to go over there and check those out, you guys can. These, This one specifically is one of the comprehensive exams. Cass says I'm going to go with A. Okay, Cass, I got you. 15 seconds, y'all. Uh, if you guys are new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, and where you're at in your nursing journey. Make sure you share. Make sure you follow. And make sure you smash and hit that like button. That's the algorithm that TikTok likes, y'all. I'm trying to tell y'all right now. You can't stand Pete's disease. I'm just saying. Me neither. But here we go. Here we go, y'all. Here's our answer. Pre-nursing student. Is it Zamir? Shout out to you, Zamir. Here we go. Philly. All right, now. I know what happens up there. 
All right, here we go. Wait, so somebody said read the quick. Somebody said read the question, y'all. It's C. Hey, read the question, and the answer is C. Petechiae occurs on the soft palate. Petechiae on the soft palate is a is a uh, characteristic of rubella infection. A uh, postnatal infection with uh, with rubella can be asymptomatic in approximately 25 to 50% of patients, especially in young children. The incubation period ranges from 14 to 21 days and is followed by a uh, predominant infection. Uh, I'm sorry, predominant illness characterized by low-grade fever, malaise, anorexia, headache, sore throat, and adenopathy. All right. Physiological, ad physiological adaptation. Okay. Uh, where can we get this from if we want to study? NurseLabs.com. All right. You'll hear me say that over and over and over because I get that same question over and over and over. Finally got my ATT scheduled to take my NCLEX in January. Shout out to you, Rose. Shout out to you. All right. Here we go, y'all. Question number 29. You learned, learned something new. I'm glad, Vaughn. I'm glad you learned something new today. Uh, a child weighing 30 kilos arrives to the clinic with diffuse itching as a result of an uh, allergic reaction to an insect bite. Diphyhydramine, 25 milligrams, three days or three times a day is prescribed. The correct pediatric dose is five milligrams per kilogram per day, which of the following best describes the uh, prescribed dr uh, drug dose. It's the correct dose. It's too low. It's too high. The dose should be increased or decreased depending on the symptoms. Now, Pete's dosing. Love that. Don't you love it? Don't you just love it, Cass? Don't you just love it? Hey, if you guys are new here, we're doing NCLEX questions. We're doing NCLEX questions, nursing type questions for LPNs and RNs. If you guys are new here, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you guys follow and make sure you guys share. And I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Hey, if, if you've already told me that, you don't have to tell me again. This is all for all the new folks. <laughs> all right. I'm an LVN more than halfway done with my BSN program. Uh, just finished PEDS yesterday. Shout out to you. Shout out to you, Haley. You meant B cat. Okay, I got you. All right, y'all. Ten seconds. Morgan says B seventy five milligrams per day. Okay, okay. I have ATI confidence, so this helps. I'm glad that helps. I'm glad it helps for you. Uh, taking my NCLEX in two weeks. Is it Ro Rowena? Rowena. Shout out to you. You're gonna smash and kill that NCLEX. Here we go. Answer is. And the answer is B. The dose is too low. Somebody did the math in there, so I love how you did the math in there, right? Uh, this child weighs 30 kilos and the pediatric dose for diphyhydramine is five milligrams per kilogram per day, which is five times 30 equals 150 per day. Therefore, the dose is the correct dose is 150 milligrams per day. Diphyhydramine, which is available in over the counter medication is a first generation antihistamine that is used in a variety of conditions to treat and prevent, uh, is a dystonia, uh, dystonia, uh, asomia, uh, paritis or paritis. Uh, uh, urtica, urticaria, oh my god, vertigo and motion sickness. Lord have mercy. All right, yes, Benadryl, but you won't see Benadryl on your, they won't say Benadryl on your NCLEX. They'll say, like, they'll say diphyhydramine. That's right. I just passed my, my PN NCLEX. Madison, you passed your PN NCLEX what today? You got your results back today? Is that what happened? Let us know. Hey, hey, everybody right now, everybody right now. Everybody right now, give Madison some love right now and tell her that you're proud of her for passing and, and tell her to, wel wel to welcome her to the shit show. Right. That's what I'm saying. Congratulations, Madison. Congratulations. All right. Congratulations on making it through, getting it through. Hey, that's like person number four. Y'all that came up here and told us that they passed their NCLEX. You know what I'm saying? I love that. I love that for y'all, because remember, y'all, Hey, I failed mine three times. I failed mine three times. And literally what I got was a. Hey, Congratulations. It's too low. No, no, no. A hundred and so you got to think. Uh, so I'm not going to go back to the question. When you take NCLEX, you can't go back. Right. So the reason why it's low is because it said that it prescribed 75 milligrams per day. Right. And so based off of the math, you get there. Yet it says that they're prescribed five milligrams per kilogram per day. Right. And that and that equals out to one hundred and fifty. OK, so here we go. Question 30. The mother of a two month old infant brings the child to the clinic for a well baby check. She is concerned because the baby fee, uh, the baby feels only I'm sorry. She only feels one testy in the scrotal sac, which is the following statements uh, about the undescended testy or yeah, testes is the most accurate. It's normal. The testy will descend. The testes are descended by birth. 
Uh, the infant will likely require a surgical intervention. The infant probably only has one testes, and normally the testes is in by one year of age. How many questions are we doing today? Man, Cass, I don't even know. I don't even know. I could do 50. I could do 75. I could do 150. We could just do a marathon. You know what I'm saying? We could do that. I mean, or that this one could just be the last question. D, girl, that baby, but <laughs> stop it. A marathon, man, what, what you think this is? You want me to do a marathon? Hey, Scorpio, look, hey, you be te you really want me to give you a 600. You really, see, look, I'm done playing with you. All right. All right, y'all, 10 seconds. 10 seconds. No, you tired? No, we ain't doing no marathon. We ain't doing all that. It says D is the answer, but more six is accurate. B or D. Okay, cool. Let's check out what this answer is, y'all. Let's check out what the answer is. Here we go. Here we go. And three, two. And the answer is D. It is normal. And the testes will descend by year one of age. Normally, the testes descends by one year of age. And young infants, it is common for the testes to retract into the inguinal canal when the environment is cold or the, what is it, the the, cre the cremaster uh reflex is stimulated about three per, th about three percent of full term and 30 percent of premature infants are born with one or both testes undescended approximately 80 percent of the is it the crypto crypto orchid um testes descend by the third month of life this makes the true incident around one percent okay Hey, that's part of physiological adaptation the third largest section on NCLEX at 14 percent remember Management of care, physiological adaptation, and pharmacology make up the they make up 44 to 49 percent of the entire NCLEX exam. All right. Who is that? Don. Shout out to you, Don, ER nurse. Hey, I know you be I know you be out there seeing some wildness, you know what I'm saying? I heard about the paper clip, you know, the paper clip stuff. So you know crazy that somebody else passed? Hold up. Who's who else passed, bro? Like, did I miss it? Somebody said that a guy named Justin, new grad nurse here, uh, passed my NCLEX last week. Love your life. Justin, hey, everybody stop right now and give Justin love, right? Congratulations to you, Justin. I'm so glad that the lives helped. Hey, send me a DM, bro, and just tell me like how the lives have helped you, how I've helped you, whatever, whatever, man. I don't like as long as you say it helps me out a ton, but everybody show Justin some love. Welcome to the greatest shit show on earth. Um, you know, and uh, go out there and be ready, right? Go out there and be prepared. Your first six months to nine months are going to be kind of wild, you know, because you're going to feel like you have imposter syndrome. That goes for everybody, but that's okay because that is how you move through this nursing game, okay? That is how it's done. So once again, congratulations to you, Justin, and congratulations to all four or five people that came into my life today to tell me that you guys passed the NCLEX. Like, I'm super happy and, and very, very proud of you guys. All right, here we go. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Hey, but don't go nowhere. I'm going to do an Ask Me Anything after this. We're going to do an AMA, but I appreciate everybody participating. I love I love doing this. Right? I love doing this. I love doing this. I'll say it again. I love doing this for y'all. I thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, is it Leticia? Let Leticia? Ma'am, we, we ain't got no more. That's all. That's it. That's it. That's it for today. Uh, I didn't. I banned, I banned like four or five people already because they were trying to sell me nudies. Um, and I don't want their nudies. Especially, I'm not trying to buy them. Why buy shit when you get them for free? Um, <laughs> I'm just playing. But anyways, hey, I got these questions off nurselabs.com, okay? I got these questions off nurselabs.com. And uh, if you guys want to go over there and check that out for yourself, you most definitely can. Um, if you guys want to know what time my lives are, they are posted on my in my bio. You guys, Or you guys can go over there and see. But uh, 5.30 Monday... Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, okay? Central Standard Time. And also, if you're looking for an NCLEX review, you're welcome, you're welcome. If you're looking for an NCLEX review, the seven-day NCLEX course is for $48. Once you get it, you get it for a lifetime, and I'm updating it all the time, all right? And so now what I'm about to do, I'm about to turn this camera around so you guys can look at this disgusting face that I got going on right now. And then, you know, you guys start dropping your questions, dropping them like it's hot. What is the deal? Are an educator here sent you a DM? Davey, have you sent me a DM before? I feel like I've seen your stuff before. Anyways, hey, welcome. Shout out to all 200 plus of y'all being up in here, rocking with me. Um, hey, how y'all doing? Uh, my name's Kevin. I go by the boot nurse on all social media platforms. Hey, make sure, hey, so all the lives that I do with questions, they go up on my YouTube, all right? So there's a bunch of them that are up there right now. So make sure you, if you guys need them, you guys can go up there and check them out for yourself, okay? Uh, I've been a nurse for three and a half years. I've worked in the ICU. I've worked in, Jessica, you're welcome. I worked in the ICU, I worked in the PACU, and I worked in the OR. Currently working in the OR right now. This has been helpful as always. Thanks and see you next time. All right, Kat, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Um, I Like I said, I've also been in the Navy for 16 years. Uh, I actually hit my 16 mark last year. So um, 
almost, almost done, almost done with something, right? Uh, can LPNs do uh, insert PIVs? According to NCLEX, no, you cannot. Uh, should I take the NCLEX early? I don't even know what that means. Like, I need more context than that. Best way to pass mental health, uh, I'm in an accelerated BSN program uh, or I'm in an accelerated RN program. So I was in an accelerated RN program as well. Um, and the best way to study, the best thing about mental health, honestly, is the one, the meds. It's all about, the biggest thing about the medications is how long it takes for them to become into effect and what are the side effects. And then it's all about good therapeutic communication skills. Who said something about being in the Navy? Letitia said, hey, brother, is Navy. hey, that's what I'm saying. We in the Navy around here. That's what we do. Uh, I have one more clinical left, 42 days till graduation. Cass, I already know you're going to get there. Uh, I have my NCLEX in December. Okay, shout out to you. I'm a fresh LPN student. All right, shout out to you. Uh, what can LPNs do with PIVs? Can they document rate? So LPNs, LPNs can assist. And by assist, that means if the RN is putting it in, you can do that. Um you can do IV piggyback medications. You can't do you can't do IM meds, but if you're hanging the second bag of like Zosin, you could do that, right? You can also doc you can document like by looking at it saying like, hey, you know, it's it's open, it's this, it's that, so on and so forth. Uh, I think it depends on your facility and state. Um, so it does depend on your facility and state, but for NCLEX, it's on a national standard and you can't do it. What are the three, what are the three catering that make up the NCLEX though? What? I don't know what that means, the three catering. Uh, how do you determine if nursing school program is a good one? Uh, you, the big, Honestly, the best way to find out if a nursing school is a good one is the reviews by asking other students. That's number one. Number two, their NCLEX pass rate. Their and their NCLEX pass rate and if they are a um and if they are if they are accredited. If they're not accredited, mm, Kaylee says Jason. Jason, what? Oh my God, here we go. Reservist. I'm in the reserves now. Yeah, I did 14 years on active duty, Vicky, and now I'm in the reserves right now. There's an IV certification course for LPNs may depend on the state. So like I said, once again, it all just uh, for your state, it doesn't matter. But for across NCLEX as a standard, no. Uh, damn, bro. I remember your podcast with disgruntled docs. Hey, that's what I'm saying. I did that about three years ago, man. It's still up there, too. How do you like the OR over other departments? You get one patient that you got to deal with and you have a surgeon, anesthesia and a surge tech. So you're, you're, you guys are always together. I like it. Uh, crazy to see you here. Hope all is well. Hey, Donovan, man, everything's going well, bro. Like, I can't complain at all. Uh, my lung collapsed last Friday. Can I sleep on my stomach? Uh, please answer. So I'm not, I don't, I don't give any medical advice here. I'm letting you know that right now, but think about it. If you have a collapsed lung, what side <laughs> good lung up, but I don't give medical. I don't, we don't do medical advice here. If you want medical advice, call a nurse hotline. Listen to me when I tell you that. Any, don't be don't be coming into these chats. This is for everybody. Don't come into chats asking for medical advice. OK, go call, call a nurse hotline. All right. Uh, is doses math on NCLEX? Yeah, but you probably maybe will get like one or two, depending on whatever the test decides to give you. What are the categories that make up the NCLEX? So you have management of care. You have a uh, physiological adaptation. You have pharmacology, reduction, reduction and risk management, uh, uh, basic care and comfort. You have safety and infection control and you have uh, psychological integrity. So that's the eight sections. Uh, sleep on the affected side where the lung isn't collapsed. Hey, Sarah, I got you, but we don't give medical advice in the chat. All right. We don't do that. I get it. Like, trust me, the nurse in me wants to be like, hey, we need to do this, but we don't give medical advice because you could be held liable if you tell them something wrong. Even though, you know, it's not wrong. You could be held liable. Just think about that. Uh, how do you find their NCLEX pass rate? You can go on their website. Just go on their website and start scrolling through it. I don't know exactly where it's at. Uh, Maddie says, tips for new grads. What's up, Catherine? How are you? Uh, tips for new grads. What I'll tell you is to be a sponge. Uh, take notes. Of course, uh, ask, ask tons of questions. Um, always ask tons of questions if you don't know. Don't let and don't, for the love of God, don't let a motherfucker play with you. And by that, I mean your license and don't let them be rude to you. Right. There's a big different. I'm all about conducive learning. And if you make if you make my learning environment, my learning environment not conducive, we're, we're going to have a problem because how am I going to retain anything? And then if I really do need help, I'm never going to ask you for anything. Or, you know, the worst thing is like, what if you need help and I don't help you? You know what I mean? Like it's supposed to be a team effort. Right. Uh, oh, she's sorry. Wait, what happened? 
Oh, okay. No, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Best way to study Doge's calculation. Honestly, the best way to study Doge's calculation is the, I, I like the dimensional analysis and you have to practice, 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 practice. Uh, oh my God, I want to go to the OR, have an interview for Yumi in Michigan and Emory next week. Shout out to you, Vicky. So I was a surgical tech. I'm still a surgical tech in the Navy. So I've been in the OR for like the past 13 years. So it's very just, you know, True. Uh, what are the three categories that make up the 40 percent of the NCLEX? Physiological adaptation, management of care and pharmacology. They make up 44 to 49 percent of the NCLEX. OR is the way of life. Tell them, Barbara, let them know. Uh, I want to ask you a question. How tall are you and what's your shoe size? That is the weirdest fucking question I've ever had. So first of all, I'm a short king. I'm at, at, at 67 inches at five foot seven and I wear a size nine and a half or a ten. Just depends on the shoe. Uh, be receptive. Of course, be receptive. Yes. Uh, you know, be able to take construct. Hey, there's a big thing. There's difference between being between being rude and being and then giving constructive criticism. There's a big difference. OK, pros and cons of the OR and uh, the surgical ICU. <clears throat> so, like I said, with the OR, you get one patient. Surgical ICU, you end up with two patients. The acuity is a lot higher. You have to learn. So with the OR, you know, the biggest thing about OR is time management, you know, medical administration, uh, 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 sterility, surgical integrity. Uh, and assisting anesthesia, the doctors, the techs, you know, you're kind of doing like a command and conquer type deal. Now with the surgical ICU, the acuity is higher, hemodynamic stabi uh, stability, uh, uh, airway management if they're on a vent, uh, you know, uh, total body care, taking care of a patient, uh, understanding what takes priority when you're taking care of a patient, very much focused assessments that are going on. Uh, just a lot of stuff like that, drip management, which is huge, okay? Uh, okay. There's that, uh, critical thinking, like acting, like act knowing, like you can do a court of uh, any time for your words and action. Yes. Okay. Uh, time to go, time to go start this weekend. See you now. All right, Cass, I'll see you. Uh, how was nursing school as a guy? So nursing school as a guy for me, honestly, uh, to me, I thought it was, it, I didn't, so nursing school, the experience, I thought it was okay because I'm surrounded by women. Right. Out of like 130 people that were in my cohort, there were probably 10 guys or 11 guys. Like it was it was wild. Right. Um, I think the biggest thing for guys is like when people have attitudes, mostly women. And I'm going to say women because it's mostly women uh, like a lot of the instructors got and in, that got attitudes with me. And when I'd ask a question and then I turn around and I'd be like, listen, I'm asking you a question. You don't have to be rude. I'm not your husband and I'm not your son. And so after that, they were just like, oh, OK, well, you know, well, you know, so. The thing, like I said, don't 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 mess up my learning, my learning environment. Right. But, you know, sometimes it comes like that. Sometimes it doesn't. But for me as a guy, I didn't think it was too bad. But the nursing school experience in general, when it comes to learning the material, it sucks. No matter who the fuck you are, it sucks. Um, you said you updated your you said you updated your NCLEX exam, your NCLEX practice exam. How often do you do this? So I do these lives every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 5 30 central standard time. Okay. But what I do is these aren't my questions. I got these questions off nurselabs.com. Now I have my own batch of questions that I'm kind of just trying to, you know, work my way around and I'm working on doing some partnerships with some other people to bring these, to bring different questions here as well, as well as put questions into my program for people that buy it. Okay. So that's what I mean by updating the practice exam. Okay. Yes. Yes. Time management is the key in the OR. Yes, you do. You better know those times you, you can, I'm not saying you can fluff everything, but you can remember everything that happens in the pro, uh, uh, as an OR nurse, but the times you have to do my RM program is doing ATI going through the program. Do you think I'll need other review programs? Uh, Lamia, it on, it honestly just depends. If you feel like ATI works for you, then maybe that's all you need. Some other people are just like, Hey, I don't like it. So I'm going to look for another program that's going to be helpful for me. So like for me, my school used HESI and I thought HESI was fucking terrible. So I went and I ended up getting, uh, I ended up getting you world, but then I had a huge content problem, like, because nursing school went so fast, it was like data dumping. And so I couldn't even remember so fucking some shit from med surge one, you know, so stuff like that happened. So, you know, it all just depends on you and when, how you feel it, it works for you. Courtney says, are there meds that are more common on the NCLEX, like cardiac, drugs, insulin, and so forth. So the biggest thing on NCLEX is that you need to know what everybody knows, right? You need to know what everybody knows. Like you need to know what insulin, what, what are the most common insulins? Like your rapid act, your rapid, your intermediate, 
and your 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 long acting, right? They may not even give you the names. They'll they'll probably just say, "Hey, you have a patient who just received a rapid acting insulin." Okay, cool. I know rapid a- uh, acting happens what fifteen to thirty minutes. I know that I that it's going to lower their blood sugar, so they need to have food on deck to raise their blood sugar so that way we have a balance going on here right so you will see stuff like that or you'll see like labetalol or you'll see verapamil you know those are cardio those are cardiac meds or digitalis right or uh uh, um like nexium which is a proton pump inhibitor right or they'll put um what is it the the uh azoles right so your azoles which are your antifungals Right. Like nystatin is an antifungal. Right. So those are the like they, they do have common medications on NCLEX for sure. So it's all about knowing what you know. But then you also have to apply what you what you don't know versus like, OK, I do know that this is what's happening, but that don't make sense. That don't make sense. So these two I'm kind of way in between. So now I kind of have to use my clinical thinking in order to kind of go through that spider web effect, as we call it. OK, that was for you, Courtney. Because you had to answer that. You had to ask that question. I believe all nurses should start out at least in med surge. I don't believe that either. I mean, I don't believe that. Like, I'm I, like unpopular opinion. Go where the fuck you want. Unpopular opinion. Go where you want. Right. Because in the end game is you doing what you want. Right. That's the truth. Like, I didn't go to med surge. I went to the ICU. I loved the ICU and I worked in three different ones. Right. But with COVID and the way that a lot of unethical things happened that was going on while I was I, like, I was done. Like I was done because you where you are not going to put my license, continue to put my license in jeopardy. It's not fucking happening. It's not happening. So that was the main reason why I left the ICU is because they were playing with me. And I was like, yo, you ain't about to play with me no more. All right. So go to where you want. That's my opinion. That's my belief, because you don't have you. You don't have to go to med search. You don't. You can go to the ICU. You can go to the OR. You can go to oncology. You can go wherever. Now, depending now, if you want to be an FMP or if you want to try to go to those higher levels, certain things require you that you have to have at least a year of bedside before you can do that. Or if you want to go do aesthetic nursing, you know, pump people full of uh, um, what is that lit shit? I don't have that problem. Some people, that's, that's, just, that's, that's just what they want, you know, so. You can go work there, too. But, you know, they have those criteria and those prerequisites before you get there. So Vicky says, thanks. I'm doing my precept prescription in the OR. Are you going to stay enlisted? Uh, probably. I've applied for so many officer programs and I'm just like, I, and I'm not going back active duty. Like, I'm done. I'm done with active duty. So uh, you wasn't scared. Uh, you well, you wasn't scared. The professors uh, will fail you if you spoke for yourself. No, I didn't give a fuck about them failing me. I didn't get I didn't care about that because you can't you can't. You can't fail me based off of how you feel like that's subjective. You can't fail me off of that. Now, if I failed because I failed and I'm a shit bag or I did something wrong, that's different, but not what happened. Uh, would you recommend a couple of years of floor time and then go to the uh, ER afterwards? Pity, uh, pity. If that's what you want to do. Sure. I mean, because you'll go, you'll go to med surge. By the way, I'm not shitting on med surge, by the way. I'm just letting y'all know. Med surge is a specialty, just like the OR, just like the ICU and just like ER, you know, like all those other places. You know, but if you don't want to go work bedside at the floor, you don't have to. But you will develop just like everywhere else. You're going to develop your time management skills. Right. And your time management is very that's also very subjective as well. Like in the OR, our time management is, you know, getting the patient onto the like getting the patient into the room, you know, positioned uh, under anesthesia, prepped or positioned and then prepped again. Um, and then getting and then setting up, you know, sterility, you know, get, making sure all of our equipment works, making sure the surgeon's good to go. Any additional equipment, any medicines that we need to give, uh, helping out anesthesia in case there's a code. Like there's a lot of things you do in the OR and it depends on where you are on what time management that you need to hone in on, if that makes sense. But you still but the nursing process is always there. Oh, snap. That's my H1 from C school. Stop it. Stop it. Brianna. What's up, girl? Hey, I see you all the time. I see you all the time posting on stuff. So I see you. Uh, it says I'm a director of surgery and it's extremely hard to teach a new nurse, let alone a new grad. I don't, I, Barbara, I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you, especially with the way that the turnover happens, the way that turnovers have been happening for, you know, for the beginning, you know, since the beginning of nursing, but especially during COVID, like, especially during COVID. So I don't disagree with you. And I'm taking, I'm trying to get through all these questions. I'm like 20 behind. So I appreciate y'all you know, being, uh, being flexible with me. Do you think the, the next gen, uh, the next gen NCLEX is easier? 
Hindsight's twenty twenty. I do. And I, because I love the case studies. I do. I like the case studies and it's partial credit. It, it wasn't partial credit before. It was only, it was like, well, if you got to select all that apply, it's either you got, you got it right or you got it wrong. Now it's based off of a point system when you select your answers. So it's like on a plus or minus, right? You get two right and you get two wrong. You get the whole question wrong. But if you get one right, I'm sorry, if you get three right and then one wrong, you know, uh, you'll have two points instead of, you know, instead of like the whole question being wrong. Okay. Oh my God. I hate Hesse. We do our exit Hesse December 6. Hey, you got it. You got it though. Uh, did you do an accelerator program? I did. I did an 18 month BSN program. Barbara said NCLEX is way easier than Hesse. I agree. So the NCLEX to me was, of course, when you prepare for it and you study, the NCLEX for me was easier than Kaplan, than UWorld, than Archer, than, um, than, um, uh, uh, Kaplan, U World, Archer, Hearst, all those things, right? Yes, uh, you've worked too hard tonight. I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm trying to tell you. Period. Go off H1. Y'all already know what the deal is. Y'all, y'all already know I don't play. Hey, so I have a couple of my former students when I used to be a search tech instructor right in here, and you let them know I don't play no games when it come about me and mine. You know what I'm saying? And I meant them because people used to fuck with them, and I used to go and I used to find them and be like, hey, so you have a problem with my student? So. What kind of unethical things happen? Look, I got a laundry list. Brandy said, 100% I'm in peds and went to women's health, uh, went straight back to peds, okay? Um, my nursing recruiter said that those specialty areas are very competitive. So the specialty areas are very competitive, but she did not say that you could not get into it. Very competitive does not mean you can't get in. I'd be damned, like, you have to tell me to my face that I can't get in. And Tisha says, thank you, have a great weekend. You have a great weekend too. I failed my exit, Hesse. What did you use to study for it? I feel like I'm ready to go around. Uh, I think I'm, I feel like I'm ready this go around. If you feel like you're ready this go around based off of, honestly, the Hesse is all based off of that Elsevier and Saunders book. Yeah, the tur- like Barbara, you already know the deal that with those turnover times, they're crazy. Like on average during COVID and even now, like the ICU that I used to work at, like on average six months, six months to a year and everybody was gone. Like I went up to the ICU not too long ago. There's rarely any of the people that I started with up there. They're the majority of them are gone. Uh, I was a surgical tech for years and got out due to stress. Yep. It'll do that to you. D dimer at 4,000. Lord of mercy. Uh, with a full uh, body CT for bleeding. What do you think? Ah. PEs. Uh, how to deal with nurses that eat their young. Look, Maddie, you want me to tell you how you deal with nurses that eat their young? You confront them. You, you confront them quick, fast, and in a hurry. I've had, I had a nurse that did that to me and she looked at me and she was just like, how do you not know this? And I looked her dead in her face and I was like, Hey, let me tell you something right now. I don't know it because I, and I was just like, it's not about the fact that I don't know it. I've seen it in a book. I've read it in a book, but this is my first time experiencing it with a live patient, right? So a book can tell me can tell me the perfect fucking way to do it. But if I've never seen it in person, that's a totally different story. When I was doing, when I was in the ICU, all we really saw were COVID patients, dying patients. Uh, and then, you know, slowly I started to get other people. So I had, t- I had great vent management. I had great hemodynamics. I had great everything. But then you bring in me something simple. I'm just like, damn, bro, I've never been experienced this before. So for some other people, it may feel easy. And for some other people, it may, it may not. So for people that want to eat, that want to eat their young, you confront them like right now. Like, and there's no, there's no fucking, there's no debate or, you know, tell them like, Hey, can I speak with you? And then if you need to take their asses into the management, then the manager's office with you and be like, listen, there's this thing that's been happening. You know, I don't know what your problem is, but do you have a problem with me? Is there something that I'm doing wrong? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. There's ways for you to communicate that. Right. Because people fucking forget where they come from. I think I want to go ICU. Uh, uh, is it Ayla? Go, go to the ICU then. Um, People forget where they come from. And that's the shit that really upsets me. What'd you say, Barbara? I know uh, Barbara is agreeing with me. That's what I'm talking about, Barbara. Barbara, me, you should, me we, we're going to be real good friends, Barbara. Um, so I'm an LPN uh, and an ASN. Any advice on what to study for the entrance exam? Uh, they have those Mometrics books. They're the yellow ones. Just find a Mometric HESI or ATI book that for the entrance and those will help you out a ton. But no, most definitely, most definitely don't have people play with you. I'm trying to tell you. I, I, like, I, don't, I don't play that game. If you got a problem with me, If you got a problem with me, you better come and tell me. And I think that's why most, this is all I hear when I got to the floor. We love our men in nursing, right? I'm so glad there's a male up here because it kind of helps break up the monotony of, you know, all the women on the, on the floor. But the one thing that you're not going to do is play with me. Like I'm not like, I'll do anything. I'll do anything for you. We'll help each other out. We'll do everything. Right. And then next, you know, boom, you, you, you want to come over here and try to, you know, eat me like I'm a young baby. 
then we're about to have a problem. And then I'll tell you, hey, if you ain't got nothing constructive to say to me, don't say shit to me. Who is it? Uh, what area are you working in now? I went, uh, I actually went to neuro ICU. Shout out to you. So my first ICU that I worked in was a burn ICU and I absolutely loved it. I loved it. I did it. I worked in a burn ICU while I was still active duty and then I got off active duty so I couldn't be there anymore. So I did six months in a burn ICU and then I went into a, um, a neuro and medical ICU at a different hospital. And uh, yeah, that was that was wild. I love the burn ICU. If I could have stayed there, I would have stayed there. I learned so much. I learned about CRT there. I learned a lot about, you know, my hemodynamics. I learned a lot about uh, my vasopressors. I learned a lot about a lot while I was there. And I was able to apply that when I got to these COVID ICUs. And it was crazy. Uh, I worked in I worked in surgery for six years. Hard work. Definitely, bre- definitely breed it, it, it. It can be very stressful. The medical field is cutthroat. It is. But contrary to popular belief, it really is. It, it really is like that. Uh, five weeks to graduate from LVN, then going to RN in the fall. Martha, shout out to you. Laura, I'm letting them know. Appreciate you in the answer. Maddie, you are welcome. Chris says, I got out of the hospital last Saturday from pneumonia and sepsis. How long uh, until I breathe again? Chris, we don't give medical advice here. If you need medical advice, you need to call a nursing hotline. All right. Because I don't even know what stage of pneumonia or sepsis that you're in. I don't know. I don't know anything like that. So I'm not going to give you any medical advice. You need to call your nursing hotline if you're feeling any type of craziness like that. OK. Uh, Name says, I love to work with male than females. Nami. Uh, Nami. 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 Where have I heard that name from? I feel like it's an anime. Burn ICU, though. I love the burn ICU. I loved it. The burn, the burn is burns are tough. But to me, that was the very first exposure that I had to 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 uh, intensive care. And I loved it. What's up, Deja? Miss Carter. Hi, hey, Miss Carter. How are you? Uh, I'm a first term nursing student. I'm definitely feeling stressed. Well, is it Kaylee? Kaylee, you're going to feel stressed out. That's because it's going to you're feeling stressed out because now it's it, this is now about to be your new norm of you being a student. Everything's going to come fast. But, you know, time management is going is your best friend. Uh, Demi, you're a paramedic. That's right. That's right. Anime. Yeah. Nami. Not a one piece there. I don't even watch one piece like that. That's why I was like, I couldn't remember which one it was. So uh, can we go live, ma'am? Hey, we're going to talk. We're going to talk, Miss Carter. We're going to talk about going live. We'll talk about that. Um, uh, I'm starting in the NICU in two weeks. Shout out to you, Samantha. Uh, uh, what did Aaron say? I can't stand when people when people post important medical concerns on Facebook and if only doctors will respond. That's what I'm saying. Like, don't come here. Like, and this goes for anybody, anybody that's a nurse in here or any of my nursing students that are going to be nurses. If anybody ever asks you for medical device, device, and if, if anybody ever asks you for medical advice ever on social media platforms where things are recorded or you type them out, don't do that. You tell their asses, hey, call the nursing hotline or go to the urgent care or go to the ER. You can't give them medical advice because if they listen to you, you are held liable. You were held liable. Oh, you're a nurse. You have a license. You told him to do that. Why would you tell that if you're not credentialed to do so? You don't diagnose. You don't diagnose. Remember that. OK, uh, I appreciate everything you do to help us and what you do. Bless pity for real. I appreciate you. I appreciate you being here. New grad here. How am I supposed to learn everything and be on my own? That's a good question. You ask. Yep. Time management. Um, user 51. I might, I might revisit that question, but. Uh, time management and trying to stay ahead of the assignment. I know it was my saving grace. Yep. Okay. All right. I see you, Deja. I see you, Miss Carter. Uh, how long would you recommend a new grad LPN or a grad LPN uh, to wait to go? No, go straight. Go Madison, go straight into your program, like get to work and then jump into your program. Or you can give yourself like six months to a year to get comfortable at your job and then jump into your program. Uh, let's see. You ever listen to Dr. Ratio? What do I ever what? Is that is that like a podcast? Uh, Dr. Ratio or Dr. Radio. I'm sorry, Ratio. Dr. Radio. No, I've never listened to Dr. Radio. Uh, but yeah, Madison, you either start now or give yourself six months, you know, at your job and then start or then a year, you know, whatever. But do it. The primary work. I primarily worked vascular OR or ortho cardio as a search tech. Yeah. So I worked a lot of general surgery um, and I worked a lot of oral maxillofacial as a surgical tech. So I got you. I take my NCLEX next month. I'm on Kaplan, Archer, Simple Nursing, Future Oncology Nurse. That's a lot of stuff for you to be on. However, however, I always recommend that you only really need two. You know, like one that's really good with questions, one that's really good with content or a combination of both. But just so they can kind of, you know, fill each other out. But you don't want to spend you don't want a ton. You don't want to spend a ton of money. But then also you don't want to be using so many different resources to where you start to confuse yourself. Right. 
Uh, I love the cardiac ICU. Shout out to you, Deja. Deja, that's where you say you're going to go, right? Because you say you got a job there or anything like that. Representation. Look, shh, we out here. You know what I'm saying? We out here. Emergency medicine is my favorite. Hey, ER, baby. ER. Trauma ERs. Uh, what advice would you give to a new grad when most of the staff is new from one year and up? This is what I like to call the blind leading the blind. And this isn't to really shit on anybody. But when I started in my ICU, it was it was it was I guess it wasn't like the majority of the floor were brand new nurses. And I had already been a nurse for about I was already a nurse for over a year at that point. So like the biggest thing is you guys have to do it together. Like you guys have to learn together. This is for uh, light love. You have to learn together because when I was working on nights and there were things that came in that I had never seen before, even though I had been a nurse at that point, because remember, the majority of it was burns and then it was COVID. Right. And so if I had never seen it, I'd be like, I have a question. Sorry, my my co-host in the in the kitchen, he pulled down the trash can because he's crazy. He's crazy. So that's my advice. Love light. Uh, Mark K. Uh, I have his videos and notes if anybody wants them. What videos do you have of Mark K? Because he has audios. I don't know about videos. Uh, received an acceptance letter yesterday. I'm nervous. 24. Oh, you're going into nursing school. Shout out to you. I just took my board and passed, but I uh, want to go for my RN. I just don't know how long. Madison, go. Just go straight for it. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Take that ass to school, Madison. Can I call you Maddie? I'm going to call you Maddie. Um, what should I study for for Hesse? The Elsevier book? Because that's where the questions come from. You are amazing with your suggestions and answers. Barbara, I appreciate that. And I appreciate I appreciate somebody like you in your position who's been a nurse for 25 years and can, I guess, co-sign on the things that I'm telling people because it's like, I have nothing to gain by lying to people, but I'm all about being realistic because I, this is the shit that I wish that I knew. That way I could have made a better decision for myself going through you know, nursing, maybe I should be like, man, maybe I shouldn't go to the ICU during COVID and go somewhere else, you know, or maybe I should do this or maybe I should, do, or maybe I should have went straight to here instead of going there and then did that at a different time, you know? So I appreciate you for being here and, and, you know, essentially, you know, dropping your advice as well. Uh, thank you for that. I've been amazingly using Kaplan and Archer. I used Kaplan when I used, when I went to, when I did NCLEX and I finally passed. So for those that don't know, I took NCLEX three times, y'all three. So, and my, the one, the things that helped me allow out, the most was Kaplan and Mark Clinic. I used Archer. I didn't use Archer. I used Hearst. I used U World. I used Board Vitals. I used the Saunders book. I used all those other things. And they, to me, I didn't like them. I didn't like them at all. Uh, my unit is new ICU nurses. Definitely blind leading the blind. Hey, I actually did. I actually have a series on my channel, on my on my bio or whatever, where I have a, it's a series of why I quit the ICU. Literally, I said how many preceptors I went through. I went through, I said I went through seven, but when I went back and I thought about it, I went through nine preceptors, nine. So, you know, co-host, every, look, everybody want to be a co-host. Hey, I'm actually going to, I'm going to start doing live AMAs. I'm actually going to start doing those. I think those are super helpful. Uh, thoughts on the OR. Go, go to it. My, uh, my school does have any advice for passing them. The Elsevier book, the, like that Saunders book. That's exactly where it comes from. Uh, uh, video, audio, same thing, friend. Ma'am, it is not. Stop it. Stop it with your nonsense. Maddie is my nickname, so you can call me that. All right, Maddie, I got you. Or Mads. People call you Mads. If, if no one calls you Mads, I'm calling you Mads right now. Uh, JG, thank you for the follow. Exactly. I love this platform. I'm trying to say, man. Uh, do you want to go to PA? Do I want to go to Pennsylvania? No, I don't want to go to Pennsylvania. <laughs> if, I want, if you're asking me if I want to be a physician's assistant, the answer is no. Uh, ever consider going for MP? I have. I actually consider going to be an... I, I had MP and then CRNA. And then I had uh, informatics I thought about, but my goal now is to get my uh, my doctorate in education. So I'll probably either do a Ph.D. program or a um, uh, uh, a doctorate in nursing education program, a DNE. I think that's what it's called. Um, LV in here. I need to study for my HESI test to get into my RN program. So I would Annie, uh, I would recommend looking at the Mometrics book. You can find it on Amazon. It's like thirty three dollars and it's a yellow Mometrics book for ATI. If that or the, the T's ATI, I would look at that one. I agree. You are a wealth of knowledge to those coming in the nursing field. Somebody told me, hey, you need to stop telling everybody like and just let them figure it out. And then I'm just like. Hey, shut the fuck up, because that's the stupidest shit I ever heard, because it doesn't even if I tell them about my experience, they're still going to experience it. Like that's gatekeeping. I don't I can't stand a motherfucker that gatekeeps. I can't I cannot I cannot do it. Like get out of my face. 
Uh, I got my first nursing check and my mouth fell to the floor. Hey, so I actually made, if you guys go to my YouTube, go to my YouTube right now. My YouTube is The Boot Nurse. And I made a video called My First Nursing Paycheck. I'm actually really proud of myself on how I edited that video. All right. All off of iMovie, by the way. And I talk about my first nursing paycheck. I need y'all to go look. Like, y'all are going to be, y'all are going to be flabbergasted. And that was in 20, 2021, 2021. Yeah, 2021. And yeah, it's wild. It's wild out here. So that's why I try to tell people, hey, when you go to bedside, the very first thing that needs to come into your mind is how to escape bedside. How the hell can you leave here? And by that, I mean taking the skills that you have and going to do something else within the nursing field or going doing nursepreneurship. Right. I'm a, I'm a fan of all that. Uh, NCLEX. Uh, what says NCLEX? Uh, remember, there's multiple right answers, but the net, yeah, but the, but it's never the easiest answer. Correct. Thank you for everything, Netta. You're welcome. I'm begging you, please say, uh, Tyler is him. It's from an edit. What? What you mean? Uh, nobody does. So you got it. Outstanding, brother. Right? Hey, hey, hey. So glad I found your page, Didi. I'm so glad you found Miss Melendez. I'm glad that you made it here. Make sure you follow. Okay. Um, Aaron says I don't want to spend six figures in debt to advance to my master's. I mean, I wish I, could. I, I don't have that problem. You know, I, I paid, you know, I paid my debt to society and the military pays for me to go to school. So, I mean, I paid it in a different way, you know, but hey, if you, if you don't want to go back for your master's, ma'am, you do not have to do that at all. Yes, that's where you need to be uh, just for this live video. Yup. I've been in the medical field 20 plus years, six years in RN or as an LPN. Now I'm ready to get my RN. Hey, go get it. Uh, best unit for new grads. Uh, user 51. It depends on where you want to go. It really depends on where you want to go. Like, if you want to go to ICU, cool. If you want to go to OR, cool. If you want to go to the ER, cool. It depends. It really depends on you. I can't give you a really good answer in that. Uh, what is a good source for introduction to nursing, please? Um, honestly, any YouTube channel. Any YouTube channel. Uh, uh, Maddie says, going into NP after my BSN this year, should I be worried about working as a new grad? No. So in order for it depends on what type of so Maddie, it depends on what type of NP program you're going into, because um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what like what type of program that you're in. But in order for you to get into an NP program, you have most of them require you to have at least a year of nursing experience before you um, before you apply for uh, um, before you apply for an NP program. Come on, Kev. Just wanted to shout out. Love you, bro. What's up, Romino? I see you, big dog. I see you out there. Uh, I got to pass the nutrition and med search to ATI. Any tips? Um, are you talking about like the ATI exams? DD, is that what you're talking about? Erica says 100. You are amazing. And thank you for your help. You're welcome. Uh, shocked because it was a lot or a little. I don't know what you mean. Yes. Yes. I'm still trying to catch up. Yes. I did my time. Never going back to the hospital life. I've loved working with veterans. Shout out to you. Uh, any tips for AMP? AMP is literally all about memorization. There's so many really good, um, there's so many really good uh, YouTube channels that are out there that helps you with AMP. Khan Academy is a really good one. This is for Mercy Bond, and um, I think it's Nexus Nurse. I hear a lot of people talk about Nexus Nurse. Uh, let's see. ZB says I'm uh, I'm I'm extremely afraid to start. I have one prereq left before starting. I need to manage time first. So hey, if you're scared, go to church. Like if you're scared, go to church. I'm telling you right now, nursing school don't give a fuck about you being scared at all, period. So what you need to do is that you just need to you need to take action. Don't be scared of it. Right. You said I need to manage my time first or just get into school and manage your time along the way. That way you get you get both things done. Like if you're scared, go go to church. Everybody says thank you for your service. I appreciate you guys support. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I pa wait. You passed on Platy Fitness. You said, thanks, bro. I passed last Monday. Shout out to you. Shout out to you for passing your NCLEX. I don't know if we gave you a shout out or love, but everybody give, uh, is it a Platy Fitness? Give them some love. What's your YouTube channel? My YouTube channel is The Boot Nurse. And you guys can go to the link in my bio and it'll it'll take you directly to my YouTube channel. Uh, to the person about the master's program, you don't have to uh, get your certification in your specialty. Uh, Barbara, let's talk about that. Let's talk about certifications. What do certifications really do for us nowadays besides get us a dollar more? In our spell or a dollar more at our jobs. My teacher says not to memorize, but it won't help to memorize what to do for AMP. That's all AMP is. Uh, nope, they don't. Uh, don't be don't be scared. Embrace it. Have confidence. Nor do the teachers care. Teachers don't care about y'all. They just care. They care about all they care about. And the reality is getting you through the class and then out. 
Uh, I study at least four hours a day just for AMP. I don't study for my other classes because they are easier right now. Okay, so now you need to figure out something, a different type of mechanism on how you can study and retain information. So my question to you, Mercy Bond, is what type of learner are you? Uh, what do you think about the Archer review? I love it. I think Archer is great. Um, Claudia says it's hard or it's hard. I'm in my second semester and it's foundations and farming is brutal. Foundations, which I, if, if I remember what foundations, it's fundamentals. So fundamentals where you're learning about it. And then pharmacology. Pharmacology is a monster of it. Of, is a monster of a course. It doesn't matter who you are. And when you go for your master's, you have to take advanced pharmacology and it's still a monster. The Wi-Fi is repeating everything. The who Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi or mine? Because my Wi-Fi, we getting, we getting, you know, four gigs downloads, baby. I don't know if it's that high, but it's, it's high nonetheless. So um, you're stuck. What do you mean you're stuck? Tell me why you're stuck. Oh, I finally caught up on all the damn, uh, all the damn questions, but Shout out to everybody that's in here. My name's Kevin. I'm a nurse. We're talking with other nurses. Ask me anything type deal. I want to know who you are, where you're from, what type of nursing journey. Well, I'm not who you are, where you're from, and where you're at in your nursing journey. Uh, and if you're not a nurse, let us know what you do for a living. I learn best by drawing and visual. So I draw I draw the way lift notes flows, heart flows, et cetera. Okay, so you are a visual individual. So ma'am, yours would literally be YouTube videos. What is the best college for an accelerated BSN? Ma'am, there are so many accelerated colleges out here that is ridiculous. A uh, Google search will give you all those answers for you. But that is a, the, hey, so the word best in this regard is very subjective. It all just depends on where you want to go. And if you, you need to see what's best for you. Is it best because it's online? Is it best because it's hybrid? Is it best because they have a high NCLEX pass rate? Is it best because, you know, their communication is great? Like it all just depends on you. Uh, I haven't gotten I haven't gotten more for my certification money wise, but I learned a tremendous amount about my specialty. One hundred percent. I got you. I hear you, Barbara. I hate farm and nursing, but I loved it in CRNA school. Ain't that wild, though? Ain't that wild? And I think maybe is it. Who is it? Is that uh, is it Zoe? Is it Zoe? Hopefully I'm saying that right. Zoe, tell, tell us why. Tell us why you like farm and CRNA school more than you did in nursing school. Is it because that you didn't really have a good foundation and nursing school versus how you had a really good foundation by working in the field for a while before you became a CRNA, let us know. And I don't know. I feel stuck because I think anything is work. I think I don't think anything is working for me online. So that's a quick Google search. If you want to know what's a good accelerator program, West Virginia. I actually live in San Antonio. I live in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, I thought about being a perfusionist when I worked cardio. However, I was diagnosed with stage. Oh, damn. I'm sorry to hear that, Erica. Hey, but you out here with us, you know what I'm saying? And I appreciate that. Claudia says I'm from Houston. Shout out to H-Town. Uh, I'm almost done with my prerequisites and getting in and getting the program next year fall by good grace. Hey, by God's grace or by your grace. Hey, I'm not telling you not to believe in whoever you believe in, but you need to put your work in. That's what you need to do. All right. You can have all the grace in the world, but if that ass don't put no work in, God's just going to be like, well, I tried. Tried what? You got to make it happen. I can't perform to earn my master, so I went this way. That's okay. And that's okay. We know what the deal is, right? Uh, good evening to you. Can we do ADN completely online? I don't think ADNs are online, but I know BSNs are online. Uh, wait, I think, I what's a good one that's online? Uh, w, Western Governors University. But you got to look at their stuff. I took my NCLEX today and got the bad pop-up. So if you took your NCLEX today and you got the bad pop-up, there's a there's a very high chance that you possibly did not pass the NCLEX. However, that is an unofficial way slash a glitch in Pearson View system, right? You could have got the bad pop-up and you could have passed, right? So don't you know, don't worry about it. Wait until you see a piece of paper that says pass or wait until you see your license. One of the two. Currently in nursing school, take ministers too. I'll be done in March. Shout out to you, Monica. Uh Lafayette, Louisiana. Okay. Lafayette, okay. I hate farm. Trust me, we all do. I was stationed in San Antonio. Love the Riverwalk. Look, I've lived in San Antonio for almost 10 years, and I and we live here. We don't go to Riverwalk. I, we don't do that. I use Pigmonic for Pharmacology, amazing tool for anyone uh, currently taking farm. So, by the way, I actually am a brand partner with Pigmonic, and if anybody wants to use Pigmonic, that link is in my bio. You get a 20% off, and their pharmacology stuff is pretty good, for sure. He said, right? Uh, I stand by that, and you got to put in the work. You do got to put in the work. Um, uh, can you say the name of the HESI guide again, please? Oh, so I said that, uh, it was the, the HESI guide was like the Saunders book, like the Elsevier book, like the one from like evolved, like, cause that's where, that's what all the HESI stuff is. 
I just got accepted, finally starting nursing school in January, Michigan. Shout out to you, Shannon. Shout out to you. Nursing school has been stressful. Nursing school will be stressful, right? Nine out of 10 people, you'll have those one people that be like, nursing school was a joke. It was easy. But I'm telling you right now, nine, nine out of 10 people will be like, bro, what? You're, you're fucking smoking crack because that fucking shit was hard. That's what they'll say. Uh, I have problems taking tests. So if you have, here's the thing. If you have test anxiety or if you have problems taking tests, you need to practice taking exams. That's how you get over your anxiety is by practicing through it. That's how you get through. T- believe it or not, that may not be the answer that you want to hear. And if you have anxiety that is overly controlled, you might want to you might want to consult a physician to talk about something that maybe you don't have some control over. OK, and that's not no shade or no. That's not throwing shade on nobody. That's just being completely honest. There's some people that got has such bad test anxiety that they had to go get on some type of medication for it. So think about it. Uh, how do you study for renal? You study for it. So is it Sierra or, uh, or si- Sarah? Hold on, I'm fucking that up. But for renal, like it depends on like what what do you mean for renal exactly? Like you got to give me a little bit more context. Like you got you know know the flow of how know the flow of how things are absorbed and excreted through the kidneys, right? The kidneys, I'm telling you right now, are people don't even realize it that like all of your all of your organs are in, extremely important. If your kidneys go out, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. All right. Think about think about fucking dialysis after that. If you get a key, if you have a, 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 an, a, an acute kidney failure, uh, you pronounced it right. It's Zoe. OK, you are right. Farm and CRNA school is better because of my experience in ICU. OK, that see now that makes total sense versus farm and nursing school is fucking terrible is because you've never been able to apply the things that you're learning in school versus like. You already had the application by having your hands on it, by administering it and doing all that good stuff. So that makes sense. That makes sense. Shout out to you, Zoe. Shout out to CRNA school. I was going to go that route and it just didn't work out for me. I didn't want to didn't want to do it. Just finished school in August and been too anxious to schedule my. Is it is it Taisha? Is it Taisha? Taisha, I'm telling you right now. What day? Hey, what's today? Today is October 27th. I'm telling you right now. When you get off this live, your ass better schedule your test because I don't know what you are denying the inevitable for. That test ain't going nowhere. And you need to go take it because the longer that you put it off, the, the you start to lose everything that you learn. So you need to schedule that test. Uh, I was scared to test and uh, taking more tests helped me get over it. Exactly. Exactly. You have to do it. Right. Uh, I had to get on a prescription for test anxiety. No shame. That's what I'm saying. Um, help him interpret and in interpreting arterial blood gases. Uh, what else? Uh, you tell him, look, I, look, I'm trying to tell you, I don't play no games. Uh, it says success series published by FN Davis helped me. Okay. Prepare for all my nursing exams. Okay. And and now that's another good tip too. Any tips for studying and learning how to read EKG strips? Monica, let me tell you, if you're talking about like on NCLEX, (laughs) will Adderall help uh, uh, doing A and P? I don't know. I don't give medical advice. We don't give medical, Hey, we don't give medical advice in here. Okay. So if you, if you want to know if Adderall is going to help, I would definitely go and consult a physician for that. All right. Learn how to use, yeah, learn how to use your anxiety, right? You have to, you have to learn instead of letting your ailment of that issue control you, you need to figure out how to control it. So the best way to control it is to put it through the stages. This is specifically about test anxiety. Put it to the, put it through the stages of what, what does it and then go through it. So if test anxiety, create the testing center, right? Go through it. Quiz after quiz, after quiz, after quiz, after quiz. Okay. Uh, who said something? Somebody said something about something. Hold on. Uh, any tip for EKGs, Monica? So that was your question about EKGs. So the bit you need to know what everybody else knows when it comes to NCLEX, right? But the best way to learn about them is to look at them. You need to know which EKG rhythm strips will are are, are an atrial issue, and then you need to know which ones are a ventricular issue, right? So if we start talking about you know atrial fibrillation, or uh, yeah, so if they're talking about atrial fibrillation, majority of the time everything atrial is it involves the P wave, right? And then when we're thinking about ventricular, that involves the QRS complex, right? And then you got to think about the repolarization or the polarization and the repolarization of the heart itself, right? And so like, think about this. It's just like, if you have somebody who has atrial fibrillation, right? That means that they don't have a definitive P wave, but they have a definitive QRS complex, right? So the, and so you kind of got to know like when you like, oh, man, it's really hard for me to explain, but it's like when you see it, like you'll know, you'll be like, oh, that's an, oh, that, 
you're going to be like, man, that looks like AFib. And you're going to be like, it is AFib. And you're like, oh, okay. Oh, man, that looks like AFib flutter. Oh, that looks like AFib flutter. Or better yet, you're going to be like, man, that looks like, that don't look good. That looks like AFib. Yeah, that is, that, that's because it is AFib. That means you have a, 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 a pulseless rhythm. And you need to get some circulation going through this body, right? Lethal rhythms, right? Know your lethal rhythm. So AFib is one. A pulseless VTAC or ventricular tachycardia is one. And VTAC can go into VFib, right? Uh, what else? Uh, those are the two. Asystole is another one. Those are the big three, right? Um, or those are, the, those are one of the major three that you got to look out for, right? So honestly, it's just practicing them. Like there's really no tricks, and then, and like and, and you're right. It is very easy for you to spot. Uh, like it's very easy for you to spot those big ones. Like if you have a run, like if you have an R on T phenomenon, which is um, what is it? They have um, uh, um, um, uh, six more or six or more uh, pre premature ventricular contractions in a row type deal, right? So you got to think about those. Like oh, like. Like me, I used to say it. I'm like, oh, PVC, PV. Oh, there's a PVC. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that's telling me that, hey, you know, p premature ventricular contraction. I mean, your ventricle is contracting before it's supposed to, right? H hence the word premature. All right. So um, the biggest thing about learning EKGs is you definitely want to know the lethal ones, right? And then you definitely want to know the ones that are the most common. So you know, VTAC, VFib, AFib, A flutter, torsats. You know, the tornado. Um, uh, asystole, so on and so forth. All right. I hope that was, I ho hopefully that was helpful, but shout out to everybody that's in here rocking, uh, for class. My instructor said she will be putting them on the exam, the strips. Okay. So practice looking at what the strips look like. So if she, if she told you that she's going to put strips on there, practice looking at rhythm strips, you are really knowledgeable, knowledgeable for alerts. And I love that. I appreciate that jazz. I appreciate that. Sorry if you guys hear my son crying. I don't know what he's doing. I'm about to go beat him up. And I'm, and I'm just kidding. I'm not going to go beat him up. He's probably just, he's just being a, a turd, a turd McGraw. Uh, Monica says, yes, that was so helpful. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Hey, but uh, I'll probably hang out here for about another, mm, about another maybe 10 minutes, maybe, maybe 10 minutes. So uh, what other questions do you guys have? Make sure you guys keep smashing that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys, hey, if you guys don't already follow, make sure you guys follow. I do these TikToks three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 530 Central Standard Time. All right. And then also I am going to be um, I'm going to start dropping more helpful TikToks. Uh, all these all of these uh, TikToks will get uploaded onto YouTube, um, you know, so that way, if anybody misses it, make sure you guys share and let everybody know that, you know, we you know, we out here doing this. And I say we we as a collective me, because without y'all, we couldn't have this. All right. I don't know what this boy got going on. So what else y'all got? What other questions do you guys got? Every time, Monica, I see your name and all I hear is, no, Monica. Shout out to Ja Rule. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, I need to pass my RMA. Is that the registered med uh, medical assistant exam? Okay. Sadie says, good night. I have a 12-hour shift tomorrow. All right. All right, Sadie. I appreciate you being here. Hey, just let everybody know this is what we out here doing. You know what I'm saying? So, um, certify. Okay. Why did you choose to be a nurse? Because I didn't want to be a doctor. That's why. Um, I did want to be an anesthesiologist. That was my, my goal for a long, my want and my desire for a long time. But then I started, I started to see how doctors forget that patients are people. And I realized that nursing, it was more personable. It's very patient driven and very patient care. Uh, I went on two deployments. One, uh, of them was in Afghanistan. And then when I went to there and I was just like, yeah, nursing is definitely the direction I wanted to go because I wanted to continue to help not only our troops, but, you know, get out here and, and expand my knowledge and, you know, help out other people. And then, um, you know, my journey to becoming a nurse took me eight years to get there. But, you know, from the moment that I said it to the moment that I graduated and got my license. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of why I want to be a nurse. There's more there's more nuances to that. But, you know, I think that's probably the best I've articulated in, in like 60 seconds. So. But uh, yeah, M much respect to you, sir. Appreciate it. Or ma'am or wh whomever you may be. Uh, it says, no problem. I did that. Okay, cool. So uh, what else? What other questions do you guys got? What, 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 else, what else do you guys got? Like I said, if you guys are here, make sure you guys like, share, and follow. Um, we do these three times a week. Uh, I have an NCLEX review. 
as well. So seven day NCLEX course, it is in its pre-launch phase. It, it's going for $48, y'all. And it's in its pre-launch phases because I'm consistently updating it. Right now we have 42 content videos on top of, I did, an, uh, I did a new generation NCLEX review where I'm going through questions, we're reading them and we're going through the rationale so that way you can have a better understanding for it. Um, as well as my extent, the, the extended portion of the review, the seven day NCLEX review, is where I'm going to be going over each. I'm going to be doing each section of the NCLEX client needs pie. So management of care, pharmacology, so on and so forth. Right. And that review is going to be coming following, you know, here within the next couple of weeks once the other one is up. All right. Because I am a, I'm a one man band. I'm out here making it happen. But I'm actually starting to expand my team, you know, of other people that want to teach. So I'm out here. I'm all for it. What classes did you take to get your bachelor's? Uh, what do you mean exactly? Like prerequisite classes, what nurses were in my, or what, uh, classes were in my, uh, nursing program. So like, what kind of question? What, like that, I guess that's elaborate on that for me. But, um, it says, what can I use to study for the NCLEX? Um, so it honestly really just depends. Like you can study a multiple of things. My first question to you, uh, is it, is it, is it Kayan, Kayan, Kayan? Hopefully I said that right. Um, if that is your question, the first thing I would ask you is what type of learner are you? So the question, everything that I do here in this live, these TikTok lives is exactly what I do in my one-on-one. It is exactly what I do in the one-on-one. All right. So um, that's the first question I ask you, what type of learner are you? And then that will determine what type of NCLEX review that you should get. You know, like, the, like if you're going to be taking your NCLEX, like I say, in six months, I would be like, hey, buy mine. Uh, but if you're going to take it here within the next month, I would be like, hey, you know, they got Archer, they got U World, they got uh, Archer, they got U World, they got Kaplan, they got Hearst, they got Mark Klimek, they got, uh, of course, you know, people that use ATI and they use HESI, they use the Saunders book, you know, it all just depends. There's so many that are out there. U World, I think I already said that. You're listening and audio, like, and you like to write repetitive learning. Okay, so I, so audios would be really good for you. Like you could, it's just as easy as going to get a YouTube, getting a YouTube video, putting it on in your car if you drive to and from work and absorbing the language, the knowledge like that. And then if you're a write down, if you're a writer, look at the video, if it's 20 minutes and then start writing down your notes or look at the video. And if you, they have downloadables, download them, print them out and then write down the notes out next to them. You know, that's another way that you could do it too. Uh, would like to take it. Uh, for January, I'm a Jamaican nurse. You would like, so here's my question. You would like to take it or you're going to take it. Me, I'm all about, I'm all about action. It's just like, if you're telling me that you're going to do it and that's what you're preparing for, then you need to, you need to put, you need to put the actions in place to make it happen. So if you're telling me that you're going to take it, cool. All right, cool. I see that. So cool. Cool. You're going to take it. All right. So that means you need to register for it and you're in Jamaica right now. Are you if you're in Jamaica right now, I know that the, the nuances could be a little different because I think y'all have to fly from Jamaica to go to Florida or whatever state to take that exam. Cause I, I, I coached a few people or a one girl from who was living in Jamaica and then a few people in Puerto Rico that had to essentially got to go to that same thing. So. Oh, OK, so you are in. OK, cool. That's right. So I'm sorry, y'all. my man's in there crying. I don't know what he's crying about. It's definitely he's a he's definitely in the toddler stage for just screaming. Hey, if you guys are just joining, we did NCLEX questions. Uh, we did NCLEX questions. We usually do the NCLEX questions at the beginning. I've been on this live for going on two and a half hours, and uh, I do the NCLEX questions every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So that would be my suggestion that you guys be here for that. And for every live that you miss, it's gonna go up on YouTube the full thing. So this whole two hour. TikTok live is going to go up there. So if you ever want to refer to it or see how we go through the questions, read the rationales, get into that routine. All right. Get into that routine now. All right. But uh, I think we're good. I think I answered everybody's questions to the best of my abilities. Uh, remember, you guys are uh, your hey, remember, everything is your fault. All right. Everything is your fault. Erica, you're welcome. And I say that to let you know that it's your fault. But my reply to that would be, how are you going to fix it? And then you'll come to me. Well, Kevin, it's really not my fault. And I'll be like, and dramatic pause. Uh, how are you going to fix it? All right. So remember, 
Those are the things that you have. Like when you come to the realization that you are responsible for everything, I can tell you right now that if you had, if, a, if, if you didn't pay your electric bill, no, no, the electric company's not going to give a fuck if you don't pay them. They're going to shut your shit off. I'm just keeping it all the way real. Right. Remember, mm-hmm. it's everything is your fault. So you need to make you need to make that you need to make it happen. What prereqs for a bachelor's of nursing? So uh, my prereqs were like AMP one and two micro chemistry, nutrition, sociology, psychology, you know, college algebra, statistics, you know, those, those are to name a few. And then when I got into my nursing program, it was just nothing but nursing stuff. Oh, I had to do pharmacology and pathophysiology before I got into my program as well. So, um, like I said, it all just depends on the program because some, some, some programs require different prerequisites, but all right. Uh, that's it for me. I'm going to call it a day. I appreciate everybody being here. I love y'all. I love all the people that passed. I love everybody who was going through this journey. Um, because I went through the same thing. So my last thing is to be kind to yourself. Always be kind to yourself, all right? And remember, we are unsuccessfully successful around here. Unsuccessfully successful. If you fail, brush that shit off. Figure out why. Try again. You fail again, brush that shit off. Try again. And keep doing it until you pass. Only with it, only with things that are positive. I'm not trying to tell you to be a toxic person. Brush that shit off and then figure out how to be a, a, a worse of a toxic person. No one's trying to tell you to do that, right? But... You have to go through those steps, right? You're never, you're not always going to be great at stuff, but if you work at it, you will eventually be successful and then you'll move on to the next thing. And that is exactly how it's going to go. Unsuccessfully successful around here. All right. So like I said, be kind to yourself, love yourself, take care of yourself. You are the most important. I don't give a fuck about no spouse, woman or man. I don't give a fuck about them kids because fuck them kids. I'm just playing. I love my kids. I love kids. And I'm saying, but if you, if they're, if, if you are not good to you, as you, you are not going to be any good to, to any of them. You see what I'm saying? So, like I said, love yourself. Be kind to yourself. I will see you guys on Monday. Yeah, Monday at um, at 530. We'll go over questions again. Make sure you guys check out the YouTube. But until then, be great. And I'll see you guys on Monday. Bye.